Greetings and salutations. Well, hello. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. Thanks for having me. I'm Kevin. I'm Ray. Today is Saturday, February 3rd, 3rd 2024. Wow. Um, hope everybody is doing well. This is episode 104 of our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, um, buying stuff. Totally. That, buying stuff is real. Um, and it's going to, I'm just going to say, it's going to be a chatty episode. Yeah, we, we have a lot to say. So, you know, break it up if you want to. It's totally fine. Grab some coffee. We'll have tea. an intermission. Maybe, yeah. You can have your own intermissions anytime you'd like. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's the power of YouTube. You could push that pause button. You could rewind. You, you can... could double speed. Totally. Although, I don't, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. you could speed it up. What if we talk really, really fast right now? No, and don't. And like, when people double speed, they're like, what's going on? Don't try to micro machine us. Remember that guy? Yeah. Poor guy. Rest uh, in peace. So let's see. So it has been two weeks, and it's been a busy two weeks. We have been busy. So I, all right, let's just see. Do we have ad many stuff? I don't think so, right? Uh, I don't. I, well, well, we, we have, have our kit along. Kit along, right? Mm -hmm. So there have been some questions about that. So a kit, to me at least, is a packaging that comes with everything that you need, right? So the yarn, if it's yarn, mm -hmm. and the pattern, mm -hmm. and it's like a kit, like those, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. so and we purchased some. Right, but that definition that you just said, that it's got packaging... Now my oh stop those don't count as kits. It was sold as a kit, but it didn't. It, didn't it have said packaging. Kit. <laughs> All right. right, so a, you know, <laughs> basically, we're doing it, a kit along. It goes until I don't even know end of March, I think. Yes. And uh, you know how much I absolutely love kits, and you all took um, some polls, I guess, and tried to figure out how many kits I might have purchased at VKL which we will uh, talk about. I think you'll be very surprised. And uh, basically the, the kit along, it's, it's just happening on Ravelry at the moment, but you can certainly post your, your project you know, photos and things like that and inspiration and just tag us on Instagram. But um, yeah, just knit any kit, anything that comes together with or, a purpose, you know, or a crochet knit. or so. Um, Diamond, paint. diamond painting somebody had asked about. Totally. Absolutely. So we have a really fun couple of fun kits that were purchased at VKL yeah. um, that are neither knitting, crocheting, nor sewing, nor... I almost bought a sewing kit. You did? I didn't uh, even know that there was one. No. Over the other day. Yeah. Well, you, you and Kate go on your adventures when I'm not involved and God help the world <laughs> is what I have to say <laughs> about that. Um, yeah, so I think that's basically it. Just, you know, find a kit, kit it up, and that's all there is to it. We have a, a finished object thread and a chatter thread also on Ravelry, so you can kind of share the inspirations and stuff. Good job. Thanks. That's pretty much all I have to say. And I think that's all we had admin. We don't really have any other stuff going on, right? No, but you know what? I want to, maybe I'll just say this now. I, I meant to mention this on the last podcast. For those of you who don't know, I am a nurse, um... And one of my very dear friends who I work with is a nurse educator. Her name is Cynthia. She is very much, uh, she's very into, you know, development, especially development of new nurses. Um, and I know we have a lot of nurses that watch the podcast. And for me, it's so exciting to meet everybody and then, you know, in the conversation to say, oh, I'm a nurse too, you know. Um, so there's a lot of there's a lot of nurses out there and there's a lot of people that watch the podcast that have maybe some nurses in their lives or people who are getting, you know, graduating nursing school because we're coming up to, to graduation in May um, or have just graduated. And one of the one of the things, you know, especially after COVID, there's there's a you know, it's very difficult um, and it's it's really hard work, especially for those who are new to the profession. So Cynthia created um, a wonderful like nursing journal slash journey for all nurses um, to kind of document some of their stories and their uh, like snapshots in time. Because we always joke as nurses, like, oh, man, I wish I can write a book, right? So this is the your opportunity to do that. And I want to share it here, and we'll have it linked down below. She created this, um, like I said, this, uh, this knitting journal, or not knitting, nursing journal. And I think it's so clever, and I wish that 
Um, I wish that it was around when I first started knitting, or knitting, nursing. And um, so she says that she's very passionate about coaching and mentoring new nurses. She believes um, an immense aspect of that in this ever-evolving career is to promote self-care. You must learn to take care of ourselves before we can take care of others. She thinks she hopes that this journal can serve as a healthy outlet in addition to a beautiful memoir for the future. And um, this is it. So it's an electronic, like an ebook. Um, it's got a ton of pages, like 65 pages long. What's really neat about this is that it starts with a nursing career timeline for years zero through 45 and then retirement. So it's something that you can, you know, keep track of, add to it. Um, you can print this out. You can, um, you know, write on it. Like I downloaded it on my, um, my good notes. So I can actually write on here and save that and have that electronically. Or, you know, like I said, you can print out these pages um, or additional pages if you need some more room. It's really cool. It starts with day one as a nurse, um, you know, asking what your first impressions were of the unit, what your first impressions are of your preceptor, what's the best thing that happened today. And it goes through, you know, day 30, especially for that first year of nursing, like, what was I thinking, you know, and, and you can fill that out. Am I ever going to be able to do this? These are some of the concerns that you have. You know, when you when you have to take care of people and, and sometimes their lives are in your hands, it's obviously very, very stressful. But it goes, you know, it goes all the way through that, through year one and then in five year increments. So you can always kind of go back. Um, and at year five, you know, the first thing is, am I burned out? Um, did I go back to school? Some really fun, fun questions. And then once you get to the end of that, um, your timeline, it breaks it into um like emotions and experiences which is really the meat and potatoes of this i think which i think is super clever um and it really puts you in touch with you know your own feelings and and like cynthia was saying in the beginning of this you've got to be able to take care of yourself before you can take care of other people so some of these um these topics and it gives you a, a big page to write on um and you can put multiple things here but for example, this one is today I cried tears of sadness and you know, you put the date and and just like so that you can document how you felt. Um, today I questioned ethics and morality, you know, today my faith in humanity was restored. There are a lot of really awesome prompts that are in here. Um, today I wore bodily fluids that weren't my own, you know, we all had That's those. That's gross. But I it's know, true, I know. you know, um, and it goes through like today I advocated for my patient, today I witnessed a miracle. Um, today I drove home in silence today. I drove, I cried tears of joy, you know? Um, so anyway, I thought it was, I'm so proud of her. You know, we were talking about this and when she finally put it all together, it was a very obviously labor of love. Um, and when she put it together, I was just, I was so happy. So she created a little Etsy post. Um, it's the only thing that's on her shop. I believe it's like $25. Um, it's so worth it. If you know anybody, I think it'll make a great gift. Or if you're a nurse yourself, it doesn't matter what part of your career you're on to be able to document all of this, I think is, um, is, is really, really special. So I just wanted to share that. Um, Cynthia Martins is her name and she What's has the Etsy, shop? the Etsy shop. I will have that link down below. It's, um, I think it's Cynthia Martins. Come on, Kev, you're asking really difficult questions. We'll have that link down below. Um, Cynthia Martin's, I just, if you Google Cynthia Martin's nursing journal Etsy, it'll, um, it'll pop right up. I don't know the name of the shop. Okay. To be honest. Uh, by RN Reflections. Okay. Yeah. But again, we'll have that link down below. So if you, you know, again, if you're interested, I thought it was something, you know, really special. And again, I wish I had it back when I started, but I will be adding some of my, um, my personal feelings into my own version of this. Nice. So I wanted to share that because I, like I said, I wanted to share that last time, but we just got sidetracked. Well, thank you for sharing. Okay. Well, thanks so much. All right. So that's the ad mini portion. Now we'll just start kind of talking about what's been going on. Okay. Right. So we'll go through. All right. Here's where I'm going to go through this sort of quickly. Okay. So right after the last episode, 
the following day, we actually took our niece <gasps> Reese yeah. to see a at a local theater in Bridgeport, the downtown cabaret. We went to go see Winnie the Pooh. She got tickets for her birthday in December, and we were both available. So we went with her and one of her friends. And Look how cute the cast is. Friend's mom. Yeah, it was a really cute. Very cute. Yeah, for kids. Yeah, it was great. They do, um, they do something like that every couple of months. They switch the performance yep. so like so, next is cinderella i believe no next month is alice in wonderland and okay. then the month after that is going to be cinderella and it's really cute because the theater you know you bring your own snacks they have tables set up um it's a it's a very like intimate kind of event the cast is out in the audience doing some other skits and things like that yeah music it's really fun yeah, it's yeah. A, it was a good it was um cute and then we did so we did that then last weekend is that it yeah i guess so <laughs> right there was nothing in between that's it that. folks thanks for joining us <laughs> maybe it's not as long as we thought it was going to be and then last weekend was vogue knitting live which is in manhattan so we went we took an early train in on saturday we met our friends well two of the knitting posse kate and laura in south norwalk along with their friend our friend Deb. yeah and jane mm-hmm. so we all took the train in together went to the hotel the hotel we stayed was, right at the venue yeah we stayed at the so um, convenient. marriott Mar- marquis marriott or marriott marquis they were super nice and they let us check in at 11 instead of I four know. which was great we were able to drop stuff off at our room i think the lady's name was sue maybe i told her she's my new best friend and she was so sweet yeah the hotel it's huge like you really don't have to leave the hotel mm-hmm. ever to be honest right, sure. um everything that you need food and all that is right in there um the room you gotta was, pay manhattan prices right for the food and stuff but uh the room was beautiful yeah and then we spent saturday at the marketplace so if you've never been to vogue it's very much it's a it's a fiber festival but different than like a rhinebeck or an outdoor festival there's a lot of there's more events more classes and like a gala and lectures and a fashion show so it is on at least for the marketplace it's on two floors in two separate like ballrooms or Mm -hmm. boardrooms boardrooms conference room type of thing it's set up incredibly well. Yeah. This year, I thought it was set up better than last year. Me too. There was a lot more space in between, like for the hallways. Yes, and there was more space where the l- larger booths were, mm-hmm. which made those a little more accessible. Yeah. Because there was one row specifically last year that I, it had two very popular booths on each corner, and it was very difficult to get through. Yep. Um. So, yeah, I think it's a great time if you're able to make it next year. I would highly recommend it. And if you can, wait a little bit for the tickets because they mark them down half off like two to three weeks beforehand. Yes. If they're not getting the attendance that they were expecting or anticipating. Yeah. And one of our friends from our, our library knitting group we met on Sunday who just went up for the day. She got she took the train up. Um, which is for us, it's very convenient. We're very lucky to be here on the East Coast. So it's like an hour and, and a half. half train ride. Um, she took the train up. She got her ticket on Sunday for five dollars to go to the uh, the marketplace, which is like huge savings. Um, I thought the venue, the uh, the vendors had plenty of you know stock. I think they probably replenished their stock or saved some for yeah. that Sunday. So she went up, she, you know, spent $20 on the train, $5 to get into the marketplace and she's taking she took in a show like just for the day. Right. Like what a what a really cool, you know, really cool thing. We got to see some really fun um <clears throat> like new to us vendors that we haven't seen in person before that we've yes. heard of. Um and of course, like our favorite part is just meeting all of our friends again. <coughs> Sorry, yes. my allergies are like killing me. Um so, like, right off the bat, we get off the elevator to go to the marketplace, and Lori from Skein Yarn Shop is getting off the other side of the elevator. So we just kind of, like, met in the middle. Um, it was, like, you know, these people, even though we see, I feel like we've seen Lori and Justine, uh, it still feels like, it's just so exciting again to see, like, to see these people give everybody hugs. As we're leaving, we ran into Keisha and Hope, Um 
from the Pine Barry Knits podcast. They each have um, their own shop, which is really great. And we'll talk about that in a second as well. Um, and then we ended up running into like two police officers that were walking by. Like I, you never know. Like, and then there was knitters. just, yeah. His, one of the, co- one of the, the officer's mothers is a knitter. So he ended up like, we were ch- chatting with them and he ended up calling his mom to say like, Oh, I'm, a, I'm surrounded by a bunch of knitters. You know, it was really, it was really, um, really fun. We met just so many of our older, our old friends and met some new friends. Yeah. We met Hohe for the first time, which was we, so nice in person. We did. It was a lovely weekend. You know what I was just thinking? What? Since we're 15 minutes in, we could talk about Vogue all day. Should we talk about our knitting? Let's talk about our knitting and talk about Vogue afterwards. Okay, great. Because that's going to be a big challenge. Yeah, and then as we do our acquisitions, we can yeah. probably get a little bit more into it. Yeah. So we'll, I get very excited. I feel like I'm, I'm ready to go all over again. Yeah, we'll, we will. <clears throat> so we'll wait a little bit and we'll talk about Vogue. But we'll jump into... Cause we Needless have a, to say, it was a wonderful time. It was. And we'll discuss it a little bit Months. more in depth. Okay, great. Um, because we do. We have... Uh, some good knitting to show and there obviously were purchases and we have some uh break in the bank and some owl post we have some so, amazing owl posts a lot of break in the bank all right so let's jump into some knitting i have not like rhinebeck breaking the bank but oh no we broke the bank yeah okay um i have one f i have two fo's one, two, three whips and one swatch Nice. That's considered a whip. So then four whips. Good job. I have three FOs. Oh, Skylar's starting. Do you hear him? And I think three whips. Okay. <laughs> so I'm actually going to talk about one of my FOs that I don't have with me. So I finally finished. I with you. What? Oh, yeah. Right? Yeah, I was like, why don't you have this with you? So we um, actually, so this is going to go a little bit tangenty. So... We got back from Vogue on Sunday, and as you guys know, or if you do know, we both had COVID over the holidays, so we did not get to celebrate Christmas with our families, so we did our makeup Christmas Sunday evening when we got home. So I can be known to be a procrastinator, and I procrastinated with one of our nephew's sweaters. I was knitting him... Um, and this is for our nephew, Roman. I was knitting him the baby vertebrae by Kelly Van Nykirk. So it is, I've knit this several times. It really it's is such really a, a great pattern. It's a nice pattern. Yeah. Um, our sister-in-law, she likes it. I knit it for our niece, Riley. And our sister-in-law, sister-in-law really liked that it doesn't close all the way. Um, so that if she does spit up, it didn't get on the sweater. It just got on her clothes. Somebody had mentioned that one of the main purposes was for the skin to skin contact Mm. that their back is covered. So it's another great option for a newborn. This is the pattern. It's so sweet. It goes from newborn to two years old. So great pattern. Mm -hmm. It has... Instructions for a four ply fingering, eight ply DK, or a ten ply light worsted weight. So you get a ton of options with this. So I knit this with some yarn that I dyed that I didn't put in the shop because it wasn't super consistent. This is the color ink blot. So it's like a navy, but it definitely has a purple yeah, undertone, undertone to it. Agreed. So I had it in fingering weight on an eighty twenty base. And I held it double. And as you can see, I have quite a bit left. I would Mm -hmm. say I probably have maybe about 40 grams. Oh, I can measure. Each, probably. Let's see. Oh, wait, that was one skein or two skeins. Two skeins. Basically. Okay. Yeah, I held two. Right. It was two skeins that I just held double. Yeah. So I I bet you could have gotten away with one skein. Maybe. So one, I have. 39 gram mm. 39.7 the other i have 39.96 so no i would have had to right. break, break into, into it me. anyways um so, oh, why did i close that so yeah um i did the so i did the dk weight do you have a picture of it or no no i didn't grab oh, a picture bummer. because we literally came I home know. packed or wrapped presents and left and what size did i make i made the Six month, I believe. Yes, I think we both did the six month. Yeah, I did six to twelve months because they were both 
Um, they're both preemies, so I know that that's going to last them for this year and most of next year. Although he put on some weight. Oh my god, he got so big. He's adorable. So cute. So that's my first FO. Nice. Really, really nice. Um, and then just, um, there's also like a mama vertebrae version, so like an adult version of this as well, which is really cool. The pattern is lovely. It's color-coded, like Kevin, I think Kevin showed you, like the different sizing, so yeah. you know where to, like where you are and how many stitches and stuff you should have. It's a, it's Highly a recommend. great pattern. I love it for... Um, newborns i really enjoy actually knitting it in fingering weight mm -hmm. it obviously takes a little bit longer because it's fingering weight the dk weight one was nice because it really flew it off did. the needles i agree like i did both i know i did both sleeves in a day <clears throat> so that is um finish object one nice good job um i'll jump in i finished um my like modified sock head slouch. This was knit with um, Kevin's yarn in the colorway Fancy Flannel. It's uh, very. It's one of our most popular colorways, um, and it was one of those colorways that like matched Kevin's had a, a flannel shirt on, um, and didn't unbeknownst to us like it matched like perfectly. So I finished the hat. It's a very very simple. Um, it kind of gives me that Lyle cap vibe. Um, what I ended up doing was I cast on 136 stitches, which I believe, and I used, uh, I used two different patterns, um, to kind of get, uh, like some inspiration from. So I used the sock head slouch pattern by Kelly McClure and I used the Lyle cap by, uh, who does the Lyle cap? It is oh, Blue Mountain or... Lyle Shoot. Cap is... You know what? I think I probably should be pulling that up, right? Um, I know, Blue Sky Fiber. Blue Sky Fibers. Okay, I knew there was like a blue in there somewhere. And so what I ended up doing was I did about an inch and a half of a 2x2, two 1x1 two, one one rib. No, 2x2. Two two. I did a 2x2 two two rib. I did a German Twisted Cast On, which is my favorite cast on for hats. I knit to about 7 inches. And then I started the decreases. I was going to try to use the decreases from the Lyle cap, but the math didn't really add up. So I just used the decreases from the sock head slouch as well. Okay. Um, and I think it's just one of those really like it. I don't think it's going to keep my ears like super warm, but no. I think it speaks more to like a. Um, That's a spring fall hat. Yeah. And I just think it adds a little something to like your accessory. outfits. Or, yeah, an accessory. Accessory. Thanks. That's yeah. yeah that, I think, but it's super that could cute. Be why it falls under accessories. I'm yeah, probably. So my, you know, the goal is really to. I want to start knitting more with Kevin's yarn, um, so that we have some samples and things, just in case we decide that we ever want to do a trunk show. Wink, wink. Um, so more to come on that stuff. So anyway, that was the first one, and it was just I knit this on a US three, which is a three point. Two five millimeter needle, I think, and um, yeah, I love the I love the color. I love how like there's none of that like there's no pooling or anything here. It looks pretty even, Kev. I think you did a really good job dyeing. I it. thank you. I love yeah. that color. Like it, I love that. There's so it's really interesting with that, right? It's the same. In a lot of people or dyers don't often talk about this, but what's really fun is it's the same see. blue, and it's the same brown but it's used in two different strengths so one let's say is we'll say one is saturated one's less saturated on both the colors and then it's just um an orange speckle but there's also a nice balance of white space in yeah, it look, there's a speckle there i don't know if you can see it yeah how it's, fun so and obviously it changes a bit skein to skein sometimes you may get more orange or more white or more blue but um I enjoy dyeing that one. Yeah. So um, I used, I just I just weighed the rest of this. There's 53 grams still left here. Oh, nice. So I use less than a, a skein of yarn to do the hats. So I could probably do some shorty matching. Socks. I could definitely do shorty socks or like some uh, fingerless mitts. I don't know. Like may, short ones. You might be able to, but those, you know? I don't know about a fingering weight. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of patterns out there for fingering weight. No, I was just going to say, I don't know how warm it would be. But again, it would be our, you know, an accessory. Accessory. So, yeah, I, I don't know. Simple, easy, 
Nothing beats really, a good hat sometimes. No. And know? it was just nice, like, once you get, once I got past the ribbing, like, you just go. Yeah. It's just something easy to do on, like, the train or whatever the case is. So I was really excited about that, and it was nice to use your yarn. And that was the 75-25 base, so 75% Superwash Merino and 25% Nylon. Yes. Yes. Okay. Okay. So my last FO is I this. I have two more. Yes, this is stunning. This Kevin, is. It's absolutely stunning. Guys, it's, it, I'm like Kim, it's my favorite sweater. Yeah. This is my um, Cozy Classic Raglan by Jesse Made Designs. I the love color this. Is stunning. You could just call me Kevin with the eyes from now. Kevin with the eyes. When I wear this. Uh, okay, so let's talk about this. This knit up so quick. I, I couldn't get it. I cast it on the 13th and bound off on the 25th. Right? Um, so, I did a gauge swatch out of this. This is Sonder Yarn Co.'s Sunday Decay. So that is their 75% BFL, 25% Masham base. It's a beautiful base. It is the colorway called Personal Space. And then it is Personal Space. So this has 245 meters or 268 yards. I bought this when we were at Knit City Montreal and I bought five skeins. And this is what I have left. It says DK, but is that more of a sport weight? So that's a lot of yardage. It is. And it. we'll talk about that in a minute. Maybe. Yeah. So when I did my swatch, I was getting 20 stitches per inch. So I have 39.8 grams left over of this. So I have quite a bit of yarn left. Plus a whole skein. Plus a whole skein. Yeah. So we'll say it used three and a half skeins, right? Roughly. I did my gauge swatch on the recommended needles, which are a US 2, 5, and 7. Mm -hmm. I believe. Let me just double check. Um, what did you use the 2 for? The cast on. Oh, well, smart. hold on. We're gonna we're we're gonna go talk about that. Where the heck? Okay, because I have questions. Yeah. Um, all right. So, the recommended needles are a US two point five, so that's a three millimeter, a US three, which is a three point two five millimeter, and a US seven, which is a four point five millimeter. So I did the gauge swatch with the US seven, and I got twenty stitches per inch. The gauge that the pattern calls for is 18. So I had two things that I could do. I could either go up a sweater size. And when I did the math, I think I was between sizes with what that, what I would have needed when I did right. my math. So I knew at 20 stitches over four inches, I was getting five stitches per inch and I wanted we'll say four inches of positive ease with a 42 inch chest mm -hmm. so I was looking to get 46 inch chest and it would have fallen I want to say it fell between the large and the extra large size right in the pattern so my thought was oh I don't want that much more positive ease to go up to the extra large so i chose to go up a needle size so i used a us3 a us4 and a us8 mm -hmm. to knit this on i do think it makes a fantastic fabric the fabric looks incredible um it is maybe it's a little airier than i would have liked in the arm but stop working out i'm i know right i'm incredibly pleased with this it fits very well i did block it to 46 inches yep. and when i measure that 46 inches i go from my underarm to the underarm mm -hmm. and i block that out to make sure that is 23 inches across because then it would be 23 on the back side as well um this is a tubular cast on that's a nice cast on it fit. I mean, this neck fits me beautifully. It does. 
there are short rows in it and this is one of the few sweaters where i did short rows and you can clearly tell at the collar what's the front and the back mm -hmm. of the sweater i love that so super pleased with that I knit the size four, which was the large. Um, for my sleeves, I think I misread the pattern and I did a decrease on every row four. I actually think I probably should have done it on every fifth row, but um, I still, I, I can't say enough good things about this pattern. Um, it is meant for, it's written for fingering and mohair. So DK will work fine for it. Yeah. I just, I think it's so lovely. There's so much really information is. in it. It also gives you instructions how to fade colors if you want to. Fun. It also has instructions on how to do some waist shaping to bring your waist in. I think you can also reverse that. And if you need more room in your midsection at the points where it recommends decreases, do some increases, and then you'd get a little more extra room down there if you need it or like it. Um, I, myself, I didn't do that, but I think maybe it would have been nice to do a couple increases oh. for me. Cause I do like, I don't like having anything super tight on my me midsection neither. i do like a little more room mm -hmm. um because i like to eat <laughs> true <laughs> so absolutely so i like that extra space knitting can only stretch so far and i've knit sweaters before where it i have more space maybe up top and then sometimes it's too much down by my midsection so in a case like that it would have been really nice to have that option of doing the way shaping and bringing it in a bit to give a better silhouette. So I would highly recommend this as your first sweater pattern. I think it's so well written. So many people have knit it. I will be making another one and we will talk about that in just a bit. And yes, we'll talk yeah. about that. So I think you make a really good point too. Like even though we've knit a, a couple of sweaters before, um, to have that, you know, there's always opportunities for like learning you know, and what fits you best. Like not, e not every sweater, even if you, even if it's super size inclusive, right. Is not going to ever fit your body perfectly unless right. you can make those modifications. And to know that you have, you know, now how to modify around your midsection, if that's the issue, like Correct. that can follow you through any other sweater that you decide to do, you know, yeah. same thing with like sleeve length and you start knowing what you want to do so that you can take whatever pattern you're you're doing stick to it majority of the time but be able to feel comfortable in making those changes yeah so speaking of sweaters we should actually talk about what we did yes! last night thank right? you i forgot this no, is, i didn't forget i didn't forget but we stopped our what have we been doing to, well, because you, Bo, stopped, you stopped yeah it. i stopped you it pulled back the reins vogue would take a lot of time it does so last night was really cool we were asked to participate in a zoom interview for darn knit anyway anyway i knew it was darn Knit. anyway so if you don't know darn it anyway they are our yarn store in minnesota yes and they hold a yearly and i believe they started in 2020 a sweater camp there were like 200 oh people in person and a bunch of people online so you can go to this um, I'll say like retreat and there's a like some markets. There's a lot of instructors, classes, some speakers, in speaker, some in person, some on Zoom. Um, so we did that last night from 530 to 630 our time. Yeah. Uh, Amy was our interviewer. She She's was so lovely. I wanted to give her a hug so bad. She was fantastic and she had great questions and was really Probably great. our best like... Well, she's watched us from the beginning, so she knows. I mean, that's four years of getting to know us. So she God knew the. Bless. <laughs> she knew the the good questions to ask. Yeah. So it was really great. And um, Zach, Corey, and Matt were in the audience, so it was really nice to know that people that we know mm -hmm. we haven't met Zach in person. We did meet Corey and Matt in person. Yeah, um, and Corey's from I Rock Nets podcast. Um, so it was nice to know that there were people that we knew in the audience that kind of makes it 
um, feel more comfortable. Yes, because yeah. I do get incredibly nervous. Uh, me too. Nervous. I was very nervous last night. I didn't have my worry stone with me. Oh, you didn't? No. Mm. Um, so that was really great. I had such FOMO. Like, we got to see the people in, in person, like, on the screen. It was be- It was like at a wedding venue. So it was this huge, you know, room with all these tables. Yeah. Everybody was sitting around knitting. You know, they had the big screen up for that, like, put us on the big screen. God, I don't even know what I looked like at that point. Um, but, you know, it was it was really cool. And I was like, who the hell are we to be added to this list of amazing speakers it, that they had? They had Amy from La Biana May there. Today. Paula from Mayak. Patty Lyons. Yeah. Uh, just a great thing, like, great group of speakers. And, okay, so let's, and I have one more thing that we should have said that we didn't because okay. I stopped us. Well, at so, least we warned you all, I think, that we were going to be. But one this. of the questions that we were asked was, how do we measure oh, yeah. ourselves for sweaters? So again, we measure our chest and I try to measure where my underarm is. So probably right around this area. But the other thing, and it's the easiest way, I think, to find out what fits for you is you take a store-bought piece that you like the way Number one, that it fits and that you, that the way that you feel wearing that, because that's the most important thing. Um, obviously the fit, but your comfort level in that garment yes. is the most important piece of that. So you want something, depending on the style that you're looking for, if you're looking for something more fitted, then go get a fitted garment. If you're looking for something that's more sweatshirty, get something that's looser and has more positive ease. And again, I measure from underarm to underarm. And that's what I use as what I would like my chest measurement to be. Mm Because when we split for sleeves, that's the number that we're looking for for our chest. Yes. I typically measure from like right, like a little bit like right here. Okay. Around because when I, um, when I eat too much uh, for a regular period of time, you know, it's interesting, like, our bodies are all obviously so different. Everybody is so different. But my weight, like, I tend to get little pouches up here, like, upper back um, okay. flabbish stuff. So, for me, I'm more comfortable here. So, if I measure, you know, here. This, pe- this to me, from here to here, doesn't usually change much. But it's here that does gotcha. that changes the most for me. Um, and then, also, like, I think the, you know, to to understand your midsection too, especially if you're getting like, you know, a, f- a more fitted garment, I would just be more aware of that too. And, you know, you can make some adjustments and I'll talk about something that I have on the needles that helps me with that. But Kevin's right. You know, definitely find something that fits the, you know, fits you well, that you like, that might be store bought or that you have in your closet. If you don't, if you haven't been super successful with knitting sweaters in the past, I got very lucky and this will go into what I'm wearing currently. I got very lucky with this sweater. This is the So Basic by Maxim Sear. And I think for me, um, right now, this is my my best fitting sweater. Yeah. That I'm more that I'm the most comfortable in. So I like, you know, I like where it it falls on my midsection. It's not too, you know, it's not too tight there. I like the sleeve lengths here. I like how it, you know, how it fits across my chest. Um, and I really like the length of this for me as well. Um, so I typically use this sweater now, um, especially when I'm knitting a garment, especially a top down raglan, um, to, to kind of use those measurements to, you know, to go for, but if you don't have a sweater that you were, and this was just, um, I think I just got lucky with this. Max, I think is really great pattern writer as well. A lot of his sweaters fit me pretty well. Um, but this is, you know, this is the one that I use for that. Nice. Yeah. So that is sweater talk. And before we continue with the knitting, I just want to say thanks, guys, because we had 20,000 oh subscribers gosh. the other day. I know. So y'all are so special to us. Thank you. That was That's amazing. Yeah. Like, ama- I, I can't even put my it, head around that. It's never about the numbers. No. But when you hit, like, things like that, you're like, holy cannoli. I can go for a cannoli. I would love a cannoli. Whoa. Cannoli cake. Cannoli cupcake. You know, okay. I don't want to get... Yep, let's not let's get, not food get super sidetracked. So, yes. Yeah, so, right. thank you... <clears throat> Again, like we could say it mm-hmm. twenty thousand times, and I think honestly. we do. But you have no idea how grateful we are to have met you all and to have been part of this amazing community. And every time we go to events and we 
hear you from you and we hug you and we talk to you it just it, it warms my heart yes so so you are up next thank you, you actually you have the floor because have, i'm done with fo's great i have two more fo's uh still to chat about the first one that i did finish and i was pretty close i think to finishing it um last time Excuse are me. my um peace and joy socks from Wollens and Nash. So pretty. These are... This is the Advents. I absolutely am obsessed with these. I think they came out so beautifully. Um, I really do enjoy looking at the pattern and wearing the sock. Some people had um, some trouble, I think, with the pattern itself. And this is the piece... I think it's Peace and Joy. Let me find my socks folder. Yeah, Peace and Joy Socks by Kristen uh, Drucker. We'll have that link down below. This was um, the pattern that came with the yarn, uh, the Wollens and Nosh Advent this year. <clears throat> um, some people had mentioned that uh, their socks were a little bit too tight, so they had to change their gauge. Luckily for me, my socks, these these socks actually fit very, very well. Um, I, you know, I think during it, I was like, oh, I just want to knit in the round and go round and round and round we go. But looking at it and then looking at it on my feet, um, I think they're, I mean, they're beautiful. Michelle does such a great job with her dyeing. And I, did, I opted for, let's see. So it came with a mini and then it came with your self-striping yarn. There are 24 stripes. You do a stripe a day or you can do whatever you want, to be honest with you. Um, in the pattern, it does call for a heel flap and gusset, but because... Um, because of the length of the socks that I like, um, and then I have a really big foot, I felt like I just needed to knit the tube first so I can get all the stripes. And then I wanted to do a cut in heel, um, instead of stopping and putting the heel flap and gusset in and maybe kind of messing up my stripe per day. I just wanted to keep going with a stripe per day. Um, and I stayed right on track with everything I got. This is the 24th stripe, which is right here. So from here to here are my, um, is the actual advent. And then, um, I had plenty of yarn left over to do the rest of the foot on both socks. And then the toe, um, I think I did a pretty good job matching up my stripes. Too. Yeah. And then the toe I just did in the, um, uh, you know, in the, um, the self striping there. So I do have a little bit left over, not too much. I think I did a pretty good job with my yarn management. And then, making sure that I used up the majority of the yarn. So this is the mini, this is what I have left of the mini. I don't think I would have had enough of this to do both of the toes no. as well. Um, there's four grams left here. Maybe, I don't No, I think it takes like five grams for me yeah. to do my toes. And then this is what I have left. The, the great thing about the Advent is that they come in 50 gram cakes already. And I think I've showed the the bag before there's a little snap here and so you pull out each side you know so you never know what the next color is and there's a uh, a stripe of this mini or that colorway in between each color so once you hit that gray stripe you just you stop because you're done for the day so that you can still be surprised but yeah i have um this is what i have left over from each of those it's about seven grams 6.75 grams left of that so i used i used quite a bit yeah so if you do have you know larger feet um you can absolutely get two i mean great socks this is like almost an eight inch heat um leg i think i did a german twisted cast on two by two ribbing um for 15 rows and then i started the uh the pattern there and then um what i usually do for my cut in heels or my afterthought heels this is more of like a forethought heel because as i'm knitting i know where i wanted to put my heel so i just i marked that already a true afterthought heel just for everybody so that you know is that you just can you just knit the tube and then you decide way after the fact where you want to place your heel so i did have kind of like a forethought here i knew where i wanted to put my heel so it would be help help me measure um how long i wanted everything to be i knit five additional rows um, five straight rows after I pick up my stitches and cut my yarn. 
Um, I just knit five rows straight and then I start my decreases, which are the exact same as my toe. So I knit every other round. Um, I'm sorry, I decrease every other round. Knit one, I do a knit one, SSK, knit to three stitches before the end of that, uh, the row or the needle. I put these on um, magic loop. Knit two together, knit one, and then um, rinse you know, and repeat. Rinse and repeat. But I love them. Aren't they fun? Yeah, they're re they're uh, really really pretty. I know. Color. So now I can wear them. I've been holding on to them. Um, I didn't want to wear them, but now I can. I Great. love woolens and nosh. Good job. Thanks. That's number two. Um, and then you guys, the stars aligned. I had asked for some help on the last podcast to help me finish um, my O'Sheen hat. If you remember, <clears throat> this is the O'Sheen by Megan Babin. It is a beautiful cabled hat. I had the yarn from Hudson and West in their forge base, which is a 70% US Merino and 30% US Corydale. Um, it is a worsted weight, I believe it's worsted weight, right? It is. Yes. Um, and the colorway was smoke, and it's their, the dye lot was Rhinebeck 2022. I got all the way to the top of my hat. I was about to do the decreases, or I just started my decreases, and I ran out of yarn. So I had put the, the ask out there, and a ton of you gave me a lot of tips and tricks on how to get around doing that, you know, all the way to taking out, taking down the hat, removing some of the ribbing, because it's a very long rib, which I was totally prepared to do. Then our really good friend Michael reached out to me and said, hey, I actually have that same exact skein that I bought at VKL, probably the same time that we did, um, same dye lot and everything, and sent me the entire skein. All I needed was probably like another 15-ish grams, 10 to 15 grams to finish the hat. But he sent the um, the whole skein and said, you know, maybe I can do some fingerless mitts or something else to go along with it. So guys, I have all of this left over. The hat is now completed. You ready? I'm super excited about it. Look at that. It's a good hat. Isn't that so nice? She's a great cable pattern. Oh my goodness. Writer. Yeah, I think like it's cable pattern writer. Yeah, it's absolutely. I think it's stunning. Um, I think it fits me really well. It's super warm. This is definitely a winter winter hat that I'm gonna wear to cut down our Christmas tree, do all the shoveling that we need to do. We don't shovel. We I barely we shovel. Don't say that out loud, because we've had a very mild winter for two years, three I years know. in a row. So this is what we were talking about. There's a this is a five inch. Uh, five inch ribbing um, so I could have come down you know and cut some of that out if I wanted to I also did end up cutting out a full repeat which is I believe like six rows um, of the actual hat which I'm happy that I did because I think it still fits me um, perfectly I did a um, tubular cast on which I think is absolutely beautiful um, I actually haven't blocked this yet but I may not block it so I would recommend blocking it. Or and here, okay, maybe you know what? I will. He, no, here's the thing, and I didn't, I didn't think about this, and I don't okay. recall where I saw this or where the conversation was happening about blocking. Yeah, because I do block everything. I block my I socks. Usually do too. I block my hats. It doesn't have to go on a blocker or whatever mm -hmm. the case is. But one of the Just main to reasons. Just the yarn. Huh? Just to like have the yarn, like. No, it's actually to clean it. Right, oh, because think point. about this. Right, there are some knitting. So lines. you lines. are either, depending where you buy it, it's sitting in a store which people are touching, yeah, or it's you know dusty. You're knitting with it, so all of the oils from your hands are also on it. So it's just a nice way to wash it and clean it. But for a non, specifically for a non super wash base, it relaxes the stitches, yeah, and it helps kind of things move into place. So I think even for a hat, it's I think it's important to block it. Yeah, no, you're right. And I usually do too. It just feels so nice and like squishy and stuff. But it does once I you know. block. It still will too. I know. I think I was just like so excited about it. So um, 
the pattern is very well written it is a charted pattern um i don't think there are written instructions no. it's just a charted pattern what i did with my chart i think i had showed you is that um we i use good notes um and i could probably show you this because it's not really giving away much um i use good notes so the actual chart itself you know has the the cables like you know, this is going to be your two by two left cross cable or left cable. Um, I color coded each one. And then in the actual pattern itself, the chart, I went it through and highlighted um, that symbol as well so that I knew what I was doing, you know, as I was going through. And so there's like, there's a whole bunch of different cables um, in here, especially when it comes down, comes to like your decreases and stuff, which the decreases were all in the cables as well um which i think it like it, it's so it's so cool like the cables just kind of melt all together at the top um i highly recommend it's definitely not for the faint of heart because there are so many different types of cables but i found it just um really really fun to do i and i did the entire hat without a cable needle um so that was really nice for me. The yarn is absolutely incredible. I definitely would love a sweater one day out of this yarn. I know. That's definitely like, that's definitely a knitting goal. Yeah, it's a it's a pricier yarn. Um, but it's, you know, well worth it. Again, this is super cozy. Um, and again, uh, you know, easily modifiable. Like you definitely don't need a 5-inch like a 5-inch brim if you don't want to. So yeah, I guess not, but it it doesn't look it good adds, though with it. I think so too. It adds to it because I feel like a two and a half inch. Let's say you cut it in half. Yeah, you're not able to fold it up. So I don't. I mean, it would be fine. I just don't know yeah. if it would have the same visual impact that that brim has. Yeah, I'm gonna soak it. I am. Good job. Thanks. So that's that is what I have, and I knit it with the recommended needles which is a US uh, 5 and a US 7. Four and a half millimeter. Nice. Yeah. All right. That's it. Moving on to some whips. Moving on up to So seven. how many do you have? I don't know. I think three. One, two, three. I have four. So okay. I'll go first. Go for it. All right. So this one, I'll just update you guys as I make some progress. As you know... I cast on the Jelly Roll Blanket, which is a pattern by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears. It's really, really good. I was here last time, so I bound off my first stripe. And now I'm back down here, and I'm adding my second stripe. But I don't know if I like what I'm doing with that, so okay. I might take it out. Oh, because now you're going down so in a row. when you... When you're starting your second stripe, you're picking up a stitch from your the previous stripe. But my pickup and the new stitch, I'm going to see if I could get this close, are both on the same side. I thought one of them would be in the back. But maybe that should be the front. This is the front. No, no this side. no, because this is where I'm going to weave all my ends in. So uh -huh. I have a stitch marker somewhere on here. To make sure I knew which side was my front. Okay. So, and it's probably because I'm also picking up stitches differently than the pattern recommended because oh. I did a selvage edge so I can make it really easy. I slipped the first stitch on both, right? Or the last stitch. The last stitch on both sides so that I created the selvage edge. Right, so that I could easily go through that V and just pick it up and not have to worry about picking up a V and garter stitch. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if that's what's causing it. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to take this little bit out and I'm going to follow the same method of picking up stitches from vertices. Vertices. Because it then puts this bit all of it in the back mm -hmm. so it will be a cleaner join but that to me in the vertices unite it does create a bit of a space so i'm not sure how i'm going to like the look of 
it so i will give it a try and see what if you do like stripes strips do each one separately and then mattress stitches since you love mattress stitch and you already have a selvage edge so it's going to be easy to pull uh -uh. all through no thank you no sir i'm not doing that i'm not going through and mattress stitching like 15 stripes that's too much work for me so i just need to just a suggestion that's a don't shoot the messenger poor suggestion lightning just struck my brain but i don't know maybe this is correct i'll have to see maybe i'm doing i don't know no it can't be correct for me it's not that's okay but again i just have a, it's really pretty though i just have a bunch of yarn in this field bag from french supply co who's no longer making bags but and i'm just going in and randomly grabbing a some leftover yarn if i'm tired of knitting it because it's a, a large amount of yarn mm -hmm. i'll just break it and move on to something else i think i've done that twice smart it's other than that me. everything i've knit until i've run out of it i believe so i'm super excited to throw some self-striping yarn in there yeah that's i just saw uh yarn from woolen to nash from a pair that i finished a couple months ago that i'm gonna throw in this bag and do some self-striping cool and then i think i was thinking about leaving out tonals mm. from it and putting those aside for its own like. either jelly roll or I watched, we watched Michael's recent episode where he was talking about his safe space blanket and I bought the pattern around the same time that he did, just never cast on. But maybe it might be a good idea to keep my tonals aside and doing a DK blanket, mm. holding it double and getting through those pretty quickly. Yeah. You know, it's watching you do something like that. Like I've, I've really, I've been trying to put, um, you know, I have a crochet blanket going and i have two versions of it i was doing like a you know granny stripe blanket and then i decided that instead maybe i'll just do granny squares and put them together but i i still want to crochet a blanket but i don't necessarily think i want to do a granny stripe or the granny squares now i might just want to do like a like a simple crochet like blanket using your yarn so i might i might rethink all of that again because i have like I like how this looks, and this is not. This was just sitting next to me. I'm not. Plan I wasn't planning on showing this, but this is how I started. This looks. It's really stunning, good. Stunning though. though. Just kit. Nope. Don't even change your mind. But just then I changed my mind and I did these, and I did which also look really good. I would your tonals, and this I, is all in Kevin's yarn. I would just do that. Like granny squares and putting them together. But again, I don't want to put them together. You know, but they look so nice. So, you know who's blanket? Maybe I could just do like a plain crochet blanket. But I just, I think this looks really fun. It does. Just keep going with it. Yeah? Yeah. And I, but think I see here's my problem is that I have trouble with these granny stripes. The ends on them. the side. It's I know. That's why, I, butt. that's why I stopped doing it because i didn't like but it. this part i love like the middle right. part so you know which blanket i really am enjoying the process of seeing on the skein scoop justine and Lori are both knitting it justine's a little further along than Lori currently is but yeah. they're doing a blanket it's garter stitch with i cord i want to say molly from a home's Home Homespun Spun House. House blanket. So Justine is using an advent and she's holding it with a a basically a bare yarn. I wouldn't say bare, probably dyed white or bleached white, I believe. And it's it's just stunning. So I think I wouldn't mind having multiple blankets on the needle. Yeah. But I was thinking about doing I obviously have enough undyed yarn in this house that I could grab some undyed skeins and hold it together with some of my right tonals that I use for testing colorways. Right. So that's something else I've been thinking about doing because that's another nice, easy 
knit. I know the only modif- modification she made to that is she cast on in an I cord also. Mm. And oh, when she's doing that applied I cord. She's doing an applied I cord and not. Not an applied I cord. Uh, within the knit. knitted I cord. Yeah. Like, or whatever. Part um, of the pattern. So, yeah. Because okay. applied is after you knit it, you do an applied right. I cord. Right. So, okay. Okay. Sorry, that was a tangent. It was, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, okay. Wait, so, where were we? Who's doing a whip now? You have four. I have three. Do you want to just go again? Did you just show one? Nope. Oh, then show a whip. Okay. I mean, that's technically like, but I didn't. But you didn't work on it. I right? didn't work on it in a while because I'm still, I'm still kind of confused. Um, okay, I'm gonna show this, and then I probably won't show this again until I make um, a lot more progress. This I uh, have been working on for like two years, I believe. Um, and I'm sure you all are probably saying, oh, it's the Ivan. Yes, you're right. It's the Ivan. This is my dad's sweater um, that I really want to get done for him so bad. Um, I think I burned myself out a little bit during the holiday time and doing a lot of gift knits. Uh, it felt it feels really good to be able to like do some selfish knitting in there too. So I don't feel super guilty, but I will um, I will get this done. This is the Ivan um, by Veronique Avery, Avery uh, from Brooklyn Tweed. It's an oversized cardigan with tulip sleeves. Kevin knit one of these three years ago, I think, at this point. And, um, you know, my dad saw it on the podcast and he wanted one. So I said, okay. He never asked for anything, so I will certainly do this for him. I knit the full back. I knit one of the, the front panels. And now I just cast on the second front panel and i'm working on the ribbing currently for that nothing much to show um so i will show this as i make more significant progress what's that an end why i don't know me neither is there a knot there maybe oh i ended up doing a why did i do that i'm not sure i might have i might have did a um, Russian join or something like that here for some reason. It's not super wash. I don't know why I just didn't spit felt it together. Um, the yarn that I'm using is Knit Picks. Um, Simply Wool. Simply Wool in the colorway Winkle and Wanda. It's 100% um, eco-friendly wool. It's a non-super wash. And I'm knitting this on the recommended needles, which for the ribbing is a U.S. Uh, six i believe yep and then i'll jump up to a us eight um to do the body the fun thing about the ribbing is that um you know it creates these like details for the side which kind of gets folded in on itself um and creates like a really cool button band almost that doesn't have buttons so want just uh you know a band on the side so anyway just wanted to show this i did start that last panel once i do that i believe then i do the sleeves um, put it all together and then knit, knit around like the shawl collar or something like that. Yes. Right. So that's where I am. It is a lot of knitting. I'm doing the sixth size in the pattern and it, the pattern is very clear. It does say that it's a, like an expert pattern. I, there's, um, the increases are more. What are they called? They're called fashion, fashion de- yeah, increases. Fashion increases, fashion decreases. So you actually see them in the pattern. It creates like a really cool like dart almost. And then um, you know it is all knit flat. It, it's it's super like it's super easy, but it's I mean you can see here's um, here's one of the front panels. It's a table runner. It's totally a table runner. And then you do like a shoulder. Um, like shaping so up here as well because like, that gets joined in the back in the, the back. two shoulder to help s- yes. create the neck so it is it's the construction's very interesting it is a commitment depending on the size that you make there are a lot it's of a commitment little... a love commitment dad i love you i hope you can see how much in this this is a lot there but it is a it's a very jackety oversized yeah. sweater yep. cardigan so it's very comfy to wear. Yeah, I think he's going to love it. Um, again, it's just... And then it's just back and forth, too. You get to a point where it's just it's just too much of the same. So I just need a little bit of a break from time to time. 
But we are on pace. Nice. For next year. So I'll only show that again. I may put a couple of rows here or there. I'm going to try. Kevin suggested maybe doing like a half an hour a day on that. Um, so I might do that. And then I'll just, you know, I'll show it again as I make more significant progress. Nice. All right. So my next one is just barely started. This is not knitting or crochet. It does use yarn though. And this is a kit that I bought from Vogue Knitting Live. The booth was Hello Bargello. It's this really cute really cute wall hanging they were showing it in three different color options which are these three it's a modern take on vintage needle crafting yes so i chose this one i could have easily picked this one i like the other one too and her kits were beautiful there Everybody. were so many kits i'm yeah. talking about change purses eyeglass cases regular purses tissue box covers um which i that's what i remember from mm -hmm. plastic canvas right i that was my introduction almost kind of to crafting as a child was plastic canvas or cross stitch so i bought one and i don't have much guys i just started the first color i did i don't know the instructions said to cut a 36 inch length of the yarn mm -hmm. and this is what i got with 36 inches so i don't know if i was loose i don't think i'm loose on this it looks fine i don't know but what it's supposed to look like I, I got one too so i'm curious to try yeah so i just need to add some more but i just wanted to give it a little start so that's where yeah. i'm at not much here's all my colors it came in this beautiful vinyl bag that says hello bargello comes with the rod that you're going to need to hang it so i thought i may use it either you know hang it somewhere or i may use it for my pins that's a really fun idea can i ask a question though because i'm not familiar with with uh plastic canvas yes do you cut that off the canvas or it stays no, on this it stays on okay. so what you will do and this is cut too you can see on this edge yeah, it's a little open Yes. Mm -hmm. So you will go through and actually, I'm going to take this out and I'm going to go up a thing. So. Sorry, I'm having trouble connecting. Oh, no. Nobody's, you don't need to. Nobody's talking right, to you. So I'm going to show if you guys can see. I started in this corner. This isn't cut straight. And when I get down here. Oh, you're not going to have enough. Right. So what I'm going to do is actually take this out. I didn't pay attention. And I'm going to move it up one spot and I can go through and cut this edge off. But what you'll do to finish it is you will kind of whip stitch with some leftover yarn. And you'll just go in one square through the next to cover the plastic so you won't see any of it. Oh. Okay. I don't know. It sounds really cool. Her booth, their booth was, was really beautiful. And we really, I think it was this. That this actually is stopped. stopped us to see that really fun, like, flame-looking pattern. And um, I want to say Beth and I were talking about kind of this booth. And what I liked about this, right, is I'm not a prolific crocheter. I barely understand crochet. I would like to understand it more. But I am super comfortable with this because I do recall doing it as a kid. And I'm the opposite, so this will be interesting. But as a crafter right we all know that there are times where we lose our mojo mm -hmm. or we just aren't motivated to work on something that we currently have and sometimes the best way to jump start that is to do a different type of craft right so whether it's cross stitch canvas needle painting, felting drawing mm -hmm. something like that to do something different than the thing that you're not motivated to do We'll sometimes get those creative juices flowing. So I just thought this was a really nice way. And I will show more because a couple, two other kits were purchased there. Yes. I just yes. thought it, it was a really beautiful booth. So <clears throat> definitely check. I would definitely check them out. I thought the oh, stuff yeah. was lovely. The colors were fantastic. So that's whip number two. Yeah, I'm excited to show you the rest of our kits that we got as well um okay so my 
first whip? Second whip? Second whip is living in uh, this cute little matter root bag, which these are becoming one of my favorite bags, especially for like travel. I clip, I usually wear this, the DeloQ crossbody bag, and I can just clip this to that. And I've actually clipped this to my belt loop before, and just to like carry it around so you don't have it like on your hands. This um, I cast sees. on, okay. You want me to pause for that? <laughs> Bless you. Strovia. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Excuse me. Um, I cast on a pair of socks <clears throat> and is getting, and I needed, because I needed something to knit on the train yep. and I wanted a project that I can just not think about and knit, you know, if we had any knitting time other than the train at VKL, which we actually didn't. I don't think we knit one time anywhere else but the train for me anyway. I don't know that I knit anywhere. You didn't knit on the train at all. So I cast on these socks, um, and this is from, um, it's because we're getting close to February and like Valentine's Day and stuff, this is the Earth Tones Girl and Woolens and Nosh collab. This is the So This Is Love colorway. This is the second one I think that she did. It is 90% Superwash Targi, 10% Nylon. Uh, it's my favorite base. Obviously, I love Woolens and Nosh. Um, I love Denise. And... Um, it came with a, I got the main skein at Woolen Folk. This year or this last year, year? This past year. Um, they did not have the minis there. So Denise, being the sweetest person in the entire world, sent us each a mini to go along with um, with the yarn. And also a cute little pin or uh, progress keeper, which I'll show you. So I made some progress. This is how it's knitting up. I think it's so pretty. It is. It's a great. It really is so pretty. It's a very. And the colors, I think brown and pink. Me too. Obviously go incredibly well together. But the two different tones of the brown mm -hmm. are nice. And the. The um, the pinks like this here. The white. Yeah. And the gray are also very complimentary. Yeah. So. Um, and here's the cute little progress keeper and says so this is love which i just have i just have on hanging here because it makes me really happy and then you know to Excuse complete me. to complete the set i have a uh, one of the needle stoppers that say love is love did we buy any needle stoppers at vk no look at us no but they, we missed the booth i know and that they had it. some really like adult ones which yeah i, I would love that's right with we like missed swears it. and stuff on it somebody showed us on sunday yeah and we missed it on the way out that's yeah. right I know. Sorry to interrupt. Bummed. No, that's okay. So um, this is my first one. I'm knitting these on my nine-inch circular needles on a US one. No, yeah, one. two point two five millimeter needles. Um, I have. Oh, I already, I already, I already marked where my heel's gonna go. Wow, look at me. Good job. Holy cow. What I did here, which I actually love to do, so I decided that I'm going to do the contrast heel and toe. But because one of my favorite things to do, especially with self striping yarn, is to cast on with the uh, with a, at a color change, so that you get this one row of um, the contrasting like that color, so it kind of separates it a little bit. And I wanted to kind of border it between the two browns, which I thought was kind of neat. So I did three um, three color stripes before I switched to stockinette. And, oh no, four. I did four. One, two, three, four. Uh, two by two rib. What also I do, um, especially when I'm doing self-striping yarn, because sometimes when you switch colors, and you purl that first color change, it leaves like a little bit of a, you can see like the um, the wrap is a different color. So it kind of stands out. So in order not to do that, so you can see that it's kind of seamless right between the, the, the rows here. What I did was right when I got to the color change, I just knit a plain row. And then I started doing my ribbing again. And what that does is the that knitted row gets kind of sucked in between the two um the two ribbing rows and you can't you can't see it and you're not going to be able to see that 
um, that color change. I wish I had something else to show you to explain it, but you probably know what I mean. When you're changing colors within ribbing, it can sometimes get a little bit um, yeah, you, weird. You see that like, oh, so kind of. So here, you see these like pearl bumps? It looks here like in a that different color? It'll look like that on the front side. So in order to eliminate that, you just knit. As soon as you get to that color change, you just you just knit it. And I did that. Didn't matter if I was in the middle of the round, the uh, you know the start of a round. I just as soon as I got to that color, I knit an entire round until I got to that, and then I picked up my ribbing again. And it was it was pretty seamless. So I know that's a lot for a vanilla sock, but that's what I'm doing for this. I just I love it. It's absolutely beautiful. Yeah, it's a it's a really How nice pretty. Color it's gonna look so pretty. So that's going to be my, hey, I'm just going to sit in the couch and knit round and round and round and round. Very nice. Yeah. All right. My next project is also living in a matter root bag. Again, because it travels really well. It does. It travels so well. So this I cast on Friday prior to leaving for Vogue because I thought I would need something to knit on. You made a lot of progress on and this And I'm as not well. sure that I've knit knit on it during the trip at all. I actually have two more whips after this, I didn't realize. So this is the Muscle Burra, Muscle Burg, or Muscle Burra. Muscle B, whatever you want to muscle call it. Muscle B. Guy. This is a pattern by Isolde Teague. It is a pattern that's very well written, and you can use any yarn and any needle size. And it has the instructions for, depending on the gauge that you're getting with all of the elements that you're using, it will tell you what size to knit. Now... Ray and I have not been successful in knitting one that's well fitting for us. Right. So we received a gift for Christmas, and it included a Musselboro Berg B hat for the two of us. We liked the fit of them, and I reached out to the lady who knit them, got her recipe for it but it was different than what she typically uses right so i went but it fit us both very well it did it was yeah. and she had said it was a little denser than she typically likes them so taking that into account and we both said it fit well it was tight initially when we put them on mm. but the more we wore it again it's stretching it fit beautifully beautifully yeah. so i wanted to try one and i took a lot of feedback because some people have left stuff in comments so what i did is i cast on using a us3 a 3.25 millimeter needle with fingering weight yarn i am using yarn from nancy over at trilogy yarns this is on her glamour space which is 80 20 it's 400 yards 100 grams this is the colorway absence and desire it's, it's from her discovery of witches club and if you ever need a club check nancy because oh for sure she always has a club she, she always has multiple clubs going at any time and adding new ones so and they're always so nice this is where i am so far so i did the pinhole cast on from tin can knits it is written instructions with some diagrams there's no video that i found and then I did my increases and I measured and I was getting seven stitches per inch. Based on that, I'm doing an adult medium. Mm -hmm. It says it fits the head circumference of 22 inches, but with the seven stitches per inch and the number of stitches on my needle, that says it's somewhere between 18 to 19 inches. Mm. So it should fit me mm -hmm. okay. It's a, it looks It looks like it's going to. Yeah, it's a little drapey. There's a little movement to it. I'm just about 15 inches into knitting. So I'm almost going to be where my decreases start. Oh, yeah, you did that so fast. It. Yes and no. Yes, because it's the only thing I've knit on since last Friday. With the exception of oh. the little bit that I put in on the blanket mm -hmm. and the little bit of time I spent on the Bargello. This is the only thing... I've been knitting on. But it is a lot of knitting. I mean, it's just, it's a, that's a long tube of stockinette. It is. And I've done a lot of knitting and I've been taking a little bit more of some breaks in between my knitting, like throughout the day, because my 
this hand, for instance, last night was bothering me. I do mm. get some pain, not pain, uncomfortableness in my arms sometimes here. So I do put it down, you know, mm -hmm. for a half an hour here or there and pick it up and maybe I'll do a round or two. So it's a nice mindless knit once you yeah. get past your increases. You just have to keep going in the round. Uh, I started it on Magic Loop until I did all of my increases. And then I just switched it over to 16 inch circular needles. And here's a little tip if you guys don't do this to make it really easy to switch cords, because that sometimes can be yeah. a pain in the butt for interchangeable needles. What I do is I get, so this was magic loop. I took out my 16 inch cord and I put the connector yeah. for the cords on it and then attached, detach one needle, attached it to the cord and then the connector I attached to this cord and then just pulled it all the way through and unscrewed it. It makes it super easy. Like I don't have to transfer by knitting. Right. I don't have to worry about anything. It's a pretty quick, seamless thing. Transition, it makes yeah. it pretty, um, yeah, pretty easy. So that is the, oops, here, let me actually pull up the pattern. I'm sure most of you know what it is. Oh, it's creating a really nice fabric. It is. It is. It is a nice fabric. The hat that we wore fit us beautifully. It's yeah. very warm because when you fold it up, you're getting four layers of knitting. Especially if you roll up on that, your ears, that which brim. for some reason that just reminded me of that scene from Pretty Woman. Pretty Woman walking down the street. And I don't remember it, but I heard Julia Roberts in my head. Saying so. what? Why did that remind you of that? So when I was like, "You're and you're getting four layers wrapped around your head she says something in the movie i can't think of the scene i just i hear her and i hear the line but i can't you know like i don't know the words but i can see it all and hear it huh okay i'll think of it think of it but yeah so that is my muscle muscle bra my muscle my muscle hat all right you're up okay um the next one is, so you go two times in a row because my next one is also part of okay breaking the bank. Okay, I'm gonna actually show this first. This is also a purchase from VKL. Which one are you showing first? It is a kit. Okay. Um, and well, <clears throat> it was. It said it was a kit, but it, was. it did not come in uh, kit packaging. However, we will not speak of um, said said things. Lack of packaging. Correct. But it said kit and it was priced as a kit. Okay. So, they're uh, toffed. What? No, remind Should me of this. Okay. I'll, I'm going to talk about it in a second. So yeah, that's just... what I'm saying. Oh, wait, great. Um, so, toffed was there. They had a really uh, cute little booth. Um, with all of their, if you're not familiar with Toft, it's a UK, um, company that puts together knitting and crocheting, um, kits and, and do they, things. They do knitting as well. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know mm -hmm. that they did yep. knitting. Yep. And, but I don't think the knitting is animals. So the crochet, they do, they have a club, they have a couple of different clubs. Um, they do crocheted animals and, uh, people, as well, like I remember, we watch Martin um, from Knit Three Sixty Five. He's wonderful. I love. I can hear him. I can listen to him speak all day long. But he talks a lot about. He's very obsessed with the Toft kits, um, and he's done quite a few of them. <clears throat> and he's done a lot of the people. So they had like they do people like famous people. Amelia Earhart, the Queen, I think was one. Um, anyway, so we were there. We had never seen them in person before. And I know that they do sell their kits in other yarn shops as well. So we'll be looking for those in the future. But New Haven had some. Oh, did they? They had a carrot. Oh, that's cute. There were like three the last time I was there. Okay. Oh, when we went to go see Katie from Kitty Did Bags. Mm -hmm. When we went gotcha. to that trunk show. Okay. Um, so they had a, some really, really cute farm animals. Um, and I was really drawn to this one. So this is the Wensleydale that they have. I also, so I wanted to get the yarn to make that. Um, and they sold them as a kit. 
I guess. So I Don't had um, say you guess this said okay kit. So I got this kit <clears throat> from them, which really consisted of two skeins of yarn, and they uh, sent you the pattern. I saw this little magazine booklet there as well, so I purchased this too. And in here, there's quite a few patterns. I don't know how many there Twelve. are. Okay, great. Does it say that? Yep. Are you 18? 18. So there are 18 um, crochet animal uh, patterns in here. Sheep. Sheeps. And some of them, I mean, they're super cute. They have all the different breeds. That's the Dominic, uh, the Swale, Swale Dale. Um, uh, honestly, like the cutest, the cutest things. <clears throat> so I, uh, <clears throat> the kit that I got, oh, look, there's a bonus lamb in there. How cute is that? That's so it had the pattern for the Wensleydale. Long story short, I did start the Wensleydale. Um, I did not have in my crochet hook collection a three millimeter crochet hook. And per our good fortune, Prim was also a vendor at VKL. So on Sunday, after we bought the kits, we bought the kits on Saturday, on Sunday, realized, oh shoot, I don't think I have the hooks for these. We stopped at the Prim booth and we got a couple of crochet hooks, which we'll show. But this is the uh, three millimeter crochet hook. I had tried Prim in the past um, for some lar on some larger hooks, and I didn't know how it how happy I was with it. But crocheting with this one is fantastic. This is a G hook, three millimeter. It's super comfortable in my hand. Enough chitter chatter. I didn't make much progress, so I don't know. You should so, don't don't be expecting all of those things. Speaking of prim, what I did not know, so Kate and I went to a quilting shop. They make sewing items as well. Really? They also had knitting needles there too. Yeah. They make a lot of products. <clears throat> so in order to make my Wensleydale sheep, here are the two skeins of yarn that comes with it. This is 100% wool made in the UK. It's DK, non-superwash. This is the color stone, I believe. And the, oh yeah, stone. Here, toft DK. It's a beautiful base. It's a gorgeous I would yarn. knit a sweater out Holy of this stuff. Holy cow. If you have not felt this yarn, and I know we're making like little crochet animals, so who cares, but it makes a big difference than um, crocheting with some of the other yarn that I've done with before. But yes, I agree. I would love a sweater's quantity of this. It's a, it's a beautiful base. So nice. Um, and then the lighter color here is called oatmeal. So I have oatmeal and stone. It just takes one, actually uh, 0.75 grams, no, 75 grams um, of each color. These are 100 gram skeins of yarn or balls of yarn. And I did the um, the little feet on them. Let me... So this is all I have so far, but it's they're super cute. Um, I just have to bring the stuffing downstairs. I didn't want to start the body yet because I need to stuff it. So... Um, there you get like a little puff out for the for the arms you're going to stuff this and then these get sewn in um so i have four of those for the arms and the legs i'm going to be crocheting the body together i can't say enough how cute this is um and how nice it is to work with this yarn let me I just highly say, recommend i'm on their website now just kind of looking yeah. they have so many kits available i mean I need some chapstick. Here, I've been putting this on because I don't have chapstick. Like, I mean, guys, so many things. And they're, some are just one color, so it makes it really easy. You don't have to worry about color changing like a dolphin, for example. Oh. So here's one. This is a chameleon. Oh, that's cute. Mm, this smells so nice. Mmm. There's some pride things in there. There's a ton of different things. I mean, oh, what is that? Is that a chipmunk? <gasps> no, it's a numbat. Of course it's a numbat. Yeah, so definitely check them out. Yeah, so um, super cute. We'll show an acquisitions. Kevin ended up getting one too. Yeah. Um, but I just, I, I loved, I just, I thought this was it, the cutest thing. And it's, seeing it in person. But like, look at all this. Like, you can make these really fun things. I'm super obsessed right now. They had a great display. They great had display. hanging from strings all of yeah. these animals. So 
if you haven't heard of them and you are a crocheter, I, I would highly recommend checking them out. And another good thing too, they also do a lot. They have a lot of tutorials too. They do. And one of the first places I heard about them and, and was from Fruity Knitting. Fruity Knitting did a fantastic interview with the owner whose name I don't know off the top of my head. But between them and seeing the projects that Martin has made from them. Oh, yeah. If you're a crocheter, there's definitely something from their site. I think that would pique your interest if you like doing these types of crochet projects. Mm -hmm. They, you know what? It, they look very, they're very, um, like well done. They feel almost like high end, if that makes sense. Um, and not just like a toy, though you can certainly give right. that away, but they, they really, for me, they give that vibe of like an heirloom piece and something like, you know, something that you really want to display. Cause it looks, it looks really, really nice. One, um, word of warning though is that it is a UK company. So when I when I went to start this, I'm like going through the pattern and just I was on autopilot and I'm like double crocheting. I'm like, what? This is not right. Then I realized, oh crap, obviously it's written in UK terms. So if you're a US crochet term person, just be aware that the pattern is written in UK terms, which it's am amigurumi, so a double crochet is a single crochet in the in the U.S. You know, with those terms, you're not doing anything like out of the ordinary. You can certainly follow the pattern, even if you don't understand the full range of U.K. terms, like a treble crochet and all of those things. Um, you certainly can just it's it's just single crochets basically, and then your increases and decreases. Um, so far, I I didn't see anything else that's uber complicated, but there's a great video tutorial on how to cast on how to cast on in the you know in, in the round um you know doing like a magic circle or doing something different than a magic circle um tutorials abound having the best time Love lovely <laughs> all right so my last whip is very much just a whip because i only swatched for it but it also goes into some purchases from vkl so I figured we talk about it here. Yeah. So look at us using our our stuff right away. We are, and and we're pulling from stash for some of the other things. Good for us. I know. I'm trying to find a good balance yeah. of that. So I love this sweater so much. I'm going to knit another one. Of course. But I'm going to do something a bit differently, because I got the same gauge with this new yarn that I purchased as I did for this. So instead of doing the increase in needle size i'm going to do the increase in sweater size using the recommended needles from the pattern i'm really excited about this I, i'm so I excited hope, for you i hope it turns out the way that i thought you know it will all right so here's my color Every, look. you guys ready <laughs> it's, it's good it's really good it's really good it's really good color i yeah. just hope It'll, it'll be fine. It'll be great. It's going to be fantastic. Look at it. Oh, it's good. And this is probably truer to color. It's a salmon. a salmon-y mm -hmm. color. So here's my swatch. Oh, God. It's beautiful. We think it's going to be beautiful with my skin. Tone. And your eyes. And Well, my eyes will change because my eyes are super blue because I'm wearing blue. But. And then what I'm thinking... What is that? I'm trying to see if your eyes are going to change. No, I'm not wearing it. I'm going to cast on with this. Mm -hmm. So this color. Just do my tubular cast on in this, I think. And then I'll start knitting with this. So this is Mayax Tibetan Cloud. We love Mayax. We love um, Paula. And yes. we actually got and to what talk. what they stand I, for. Yeah. And again, I think these. this is, you know... These are sometimes really cool things to do. I've gone to my ex website and I've read their about us. And oh, yeah. sometimes the about us and their mission and statements have a lot of great information. Oh, yeah. So definitely read about that. So we met. So we've, you know, I. when did we meet Paula? Do we meet her for, for the, the first, first time, time last year? At, not at Vogue. There's I no, think at Rhinebeck. Two years ago. At Woolen Folk. Two years ago. 2022 woman folk is the first time we met Paula. Really? Yeah. She was vending. I think so. I know she was vending there. Okay. 
I could be wrong. But so we've seen her a couple times. We did the knit along with um, Pala and Hohi, but we also got to chat with, or I think I did mainly, her partner with in Mayak, um, Andrea. I chatted with him too. He's so cool. He's fantastic. He speaks like so many languages. Well, it sounded like he does. Yeah. Her staff there is great. great. The booth is great. I've knit with Tibetan Cloud before. So Tibetan Cloud is 100% wool. The wool is sourced and ethically sourced from uh, a breed of sheep in Tibet. Mm-hmm. So this is a sport light DK. So, and I got the same exact gauge as I did with my Sander Yarn Co. So I'm excited. I think it's going to be a beautiful sweater. Yeah. I'm still just toying whether or not I really want to do this little pop. I think it could look really nice. So let me know what you think. Should we do the cast on? And then there's been some discussions about doing like a stripe maybe on just one arm or two stripes on both arms. Maybe just one across my chest kind of like the Montrealer has that one stripe that's a different color than the other ones. So would you stripe? Would you do that blue again in the stripe? Yes, I I would just use these, especially because I know they're the same gauge. I think you could do like just one or, stripe. I think one stripe at the arm would be really really cute. Or just go straight up all salmon. I think this is going to be it's going to be great. When we saw it in person, Kevin had another skein of another color, like a green color. We maybe? went through a couple of them. Yeah, and I did. You know, I did the little. But mm. once you pulled that out, we all it was of us, the first the, one I grabbed. Yeah, actually. I think Kate and Kim were with us as well. Like. And Laura, like we all just we were like, oh, do it. You know what? That's it. Yeah, that's the color. So and who doesn't need a pink sweater? So yeah. So this is the colorway flame, and I purchased five skeins of this for the sweater. Really, really amazing. So that is all of my whips and some, a very small amount of my purchases. Okay, this next one, uh, is, is, am I good to go? Yeah, you're good to go. Okay. My next one is also going to be a combination purchase um, as well as new cast on. I, you know, we've talked about how much I love kits, but, you know, truth be told, samples is really what sells um, me on like large sweaters quantities of yarn, I think. Okay, sweater. Right. Sweaters quantities of yarn. Oh, sorry. sorry. I don't know if I hit the table or the, the camera. camera. I think you did good. Um, so we've seen this company, uh, Loop Fiber, Fiber Studio, at multiple events at Rhinebeck. I believe we, they're there. Uh, we saw them at VKL last year, VKL this year. I believe they were also at Knit City Montreal, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I don't think so. Because I, I remember know. their sample, one of their sample sweaters is the Once in Floral by Maxim Sear that using was their yarn. Vogue okay. last year. Okay. So Loop... Um, and I'll show you the yarn in a sec because it's just, it's absolutely stunning. Let me actually pull it up. They are, they have these, um, they have these like marled skeins of yarn. The line is called, called, called yin yang. Yin yang. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So um, these are inverse of each other, right? Um, so you have the main, you know, whitish gray color with the orange uh, or the the rusty color and then here is the main is the, like the rust and they always looked so interesting to me and i never knew like oh, i want to do something but i don't know what i want to do they also came out with a solid not too long ago to complement um the yin yang and i they had this sweater on display um and i was looking at it and you know kevin was really an inspiration too because this Cozy Classic Raglan, such a simple sweater, but it really made such an impact. Like, you know, when he was wearing it, like it just something about that classic sweater. Um, so one of the sweaters that they had was a, is a very classic sweater. It's called the Men's Classic Raglan. But they had it in, in three of the, um, like in the three colors there, you have the light marled, the darker marled, and then the solid. And I saw it and I was like, that is just stunning. I want a simple sweater. And so I went ahead and I got all three of these yarns to do the same thing. I'm going to do the men's classic raglan. Start with this. Move on through. This will be just like this. 
um, but in the in this rust color. I love the color. It's so different. I was looking at this or some greens, but I do have a, a couple of green sweaters. So I'm thinking like a nice rust, like this is totally different than my normal um, comfort zone, but I think I could totally pull off this rusty orange. And I think it's gonna be really stunning. So I started the sweater. Um, again, it's the men's um, classic raglan by Jane Richmond. It uh, is really awesome because you it's something different for me you you start out knitting flat and doing some of your your um short row like your back shaping and neck shaping first before you join it in the round and then afterwards you'll pick up the collar uh knit that and then finish your sweater uh you know down so i swatched i um didn't i also was off on my gauge a little bit so i did hold on I actually wrote it all down. So I needed, and what's great about this pattern is it gives you an unblocked gauge and a blocked gauge recommendation. So unblocked, their recommendation was 18.5 um, by 24.25 over four inches, 18.5 and then 25. Um, and then blocked was 18 and 25. So I got uh, 19 inches uh, by, uh, you know, for a four inch, um, stitch gauge and then 26 inches for a, a row gauge so my row gauge is usually always off so in this case my row my row gauge was um, my gauge was bigger um, than the recommended so my sweater will be you know is would be longer but my stitch gauge was technically smaller than the recommended so it will be tighter um, so what I ended up doing was I, I have a 41 inch chest. We just measured my chest, uh, right before I cast this on. So I have a 41 inch chest pattern recommends about four inches of positive ease. The great thing about this pattern is that each size increment is by two inches. So it makes things so much easier to, for you to find that perfect fit. So I cast on the 46 inch chest, which I believe is the, the fourth or fifth size. Seventh. Oh, I'm sorry, seven size. It's a huge range of um, patterns. There's 16, 18, wow, 16, 16 different sizes. Um, and what's great about this is that, like I was talking about um, earlier, when you find that, um, you know, we don't always fit the, you know, that, that range. So in here, you have little blanks that you can fill in your own measurements and refer to the table here for your sizing and where to measure yourself. And then this is really cool. There's a bunch of different tables in here to tell you the stitch counts and where you should be if you need to knit, say, you know, a uh, 46 inch chest. This is this is what you're gonna do for you know your chest. You can and then you have the numbers and you fill in those blanks um, for measurements. And then you also have uh, a, n a similar chart in here for stitch counts. So if you want this certain measurement, you put in you know you follow say like M. Here are your stitch counts. You should have X amount of front and back stitches, X amount of sleeve stitches, and here are your total yoke stitches. So that you can really customize that pattern to fit you, um, to fit you as best as possible. So, I cast it on. I can't tell you how great this yarn is to work with. Looking at it, I was a little bit concerned that I might be like I might split the yarn. You know, sometimes with marled yarn, the plies are not as tight, and so it's easy to kind of put your needle through both of those strands and kind of split the yarn. I haven't had that at all. I knit flat and I finally, I just was able to join in the yarn, uh, join in the round the other day. But here's what I have so far. This is kind of what I was talking about where you're working the back of the sweater. So you're in, you're getting your short rows, you're, you know, you're, you're raising up the back of your sweater so your sweater will fit um, properly. This is how it's going to kind of 
I mean, obviously it's still on the needles, but this is the front of my sweater. I have more fabric back here. What I'll do next, and great recommendation, when you get done with your um, skein of yarn, you know, for this part, before you join in your second skein of yarn, that's when you pick up the collar and do the neckband, and then you can, add, you know, join that in. So I thought that was a good recommendation. Instead of doing it after the fact, yeah, because then you're at the point now where you can certainly try it on as you go, and you'll have a much better idea of you know where your neck will be and how long the sweater is. But I I really I I like the fabric that it's creating. I think it's going to be super cool. The raglan is super easy. It's just knit front back, um, which sometimes I like. You know the make one rights and make one lefts because it kind of makes that point but this is doing a very simple similar thing yeah and i think it looks really cool with the this with was the marled yarn a left and right lifted increase oh see um so yeah that's i mean i i'm loving this now that i have this going in the round it's fantastic it's knit on a us7 which is recommended so i did stick with that same needle even though i got a tighter gauge so i just basically went up in uh, um, a sweater size because I really like this fabric. Um, I don't think it's it's too like loose. I think it's just right. It feels very, very comfortable. The yarn is super soft. It is a 100% um, extra fine merino. It's 220 gram yards per 100 grams. So it is a um, worsted weight yarn. And the combination that I have, if you're interested, the light one is called Beyond. The darker one is called Above, so Above and Beyond. And then this solid is called Ru Ruibos. I don't know how to say that. Ruibos. Ruibos? But with their powers combined, they're going to create an amazing sweater. And so this is going to be kind of like this color blocking, but almost like a wannabe fade. Yeah. Right? be very nice yeah so that's that so these were purchases i bit the bullet i got a sweaters quantity from loop super excited about this simple pattern and i'm going to kind of just use this so looks like once i separate for sleeves uh is where i'll stop with this color then i'll do the next third of the sweater in that color and then the last third and yeah. the sleeves in the solid right right all right okay so ladies and gentlemen that's all the Knitting. Now we're going to talk about Vogue. And however you identify, it doesn't have to be a ladies and gentlemen. Correct. Okay. We're going to talk about Vogue. We're going to talk about some um, owl posts. I feel like I need an intermission. I know. Owl post, which are items that have been sent to us, and some break in the bank. Maybe so we don't do like watching in. We're not going to. I was going to suggest the same thing. Okay. All right. So let's do owl post. Owl post. So, oh, God. First up is we got we just picked this up today. This is from Knitting Tree LA. They sent us a very lovely package as a thank you, kind of for you, thanking a thank you, right? Because thank you to us. People have been very supportive of the emotional support chicken. So yes, and you all, I cannot tell you how amazing it's been to watch all of these kits and like all of your chickens and so creative. People are creating. Like, m naming their own chicken? Oh my gosh, I just saw one right before we started um, on Instagram. Oh shoot, I wish I, I wonder if I can find it. Oh jeez. I don't know if I have. Creating their own. Here it is. <laughs> Here it is. Um, wool dahlias. <laughs> Cute. Cute, right? So she named, or they named, um, Agatha Christie. Oh, I love it. Stop. Look how cute. I just, I, you all are so creative. I cannot even. So Knitting Tree LA, beautiful yarn shop, really amazing people. This kit is just flying off the shelves. There's so many people doing it and talking about it. I just think it's so fun. We sleep with our chickens every single night. Absolutely. Just saying, maybe so, TMI, but we love it. So here's some, so we just got this package today. Um, so, this is way overboard. Yeah. So these, we just got a pair of these skull scissors. These are heavy duty, y'all. Yeah, these are like the, brass, it feels the, like. The skull, it's a skull. Yeah. 
Oh, it fun. actually says heavy duty. They're stainless steel. But I think these are awesome. Same. So that. And then some yarn. It looks like this is for their store. So this is their succulent sock. It's 85% 85% superwash merino. It's a 9 15.5 micron which means it's super soft super soft the higher the micron count the um the softer the yarn and then 15 percent nylon so this is the colorway called deep camo it's gorgeous right really nice it's a dark black and then you got mm -hmm. some camo colors in there so i might do a muscle bro with that oh okay. see how yours fits you know yeah and then two skeins of this which is their passion flower bulky it's 93% superwash merino, 7% nylon. And this is called Brook Babble. Those colors are And this is called stunning. I Do Beach. And it's like a thick and thin. Yeah, you can see the... the yeah. It's almost like a hand spun. Yeah. So it has a very... Um, it has like a... What's this called? Like an art spin. Mm -hmm. So really, really pretty colors. I think really these pretty. would each individually be a really nice hat. I think so too. That um, Dahlia hat... Might be kind of might be nice for that one, or a nice cowl, and then because remember everybody like it's not just the chickens like it's a it's a, a yarn full shop. yarn shop you know but this is their pattern yeah 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 and kit so they sent some beautiful stitch markers so chickens and these like Look at dice the looking ones then next up is this book which is knitting California as twenty six easy to follow designs. Um, for beautiful beanies inspired by the Golden State. This is by Nancy Bates. So here's the cover. Oh, and just show the back. Cause then the and then here's a bunch of... Look at the look at the Ladybug one. I, that one's really, really Stunning. pretty. Stunning. Um, is it Ladybug or Monarch? Like a monarch Oh, maybe butterfly. a Monarch Butterfly. I, would go I don't butterfly. know, but it's gorgeous. So yeah, so that was awesome. And then last in this beautiful thank you box... Two more emotional support chickens. What? Mine is going to be Henedic Cumberbock. You gotta do Cumberbock? Cumberbock. And mine, sorry Michael, is Beyonce. So I don't know what the Oh, look at the colors in there. Yeah, it's... Ooh, that's gonna be so fun. That was a really a nice uh, combo on yeah. the site. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I we will have more... Chicken's coming. Chicken's coming. We'll let you know when they hatch. Yeah. All right. I love the, I love their packaging. I love everything about this. I really do. Super so, excited. Oh, I can't. Look at those colors. It, that's going to be a fun one. So thank yeah. you, Knitting Tree LA. Yes, that, was that was super generous. So generous of we you. We just picked it up this morning. Yes. And then we also received some new bags to us. So our friend Jay, he yep. has designed a bag. It is called threads company right threads bag company okay we'll have and that link down below so he sent each of us one bag and then some bags for you that we'll use in a future giveaway yep i'll show you the ones that we're going to keep and then we'll show you the ones that we're going to give away okay we'll give them away in the future we're not going to do that today right. we have a lot going on today um so this is one that we're going to keep these bags and wait till you see what i have in mind because i've been using mine huge the bags are huge you have a very large square bottom um, inside is a plain muslin. Uh, outside, it feels like a, I think it's a canvas, a cotton linen. It's heavy duty. You have leather handles on both sides. It's There's a, a nice pocket in there as well. Is there? No. Yeah. This one doesn't have a pocket. Oh, it doesn't? No. Oh. Does yours? Well, mine does. Okay. Well, but yeah, I think these are great size bags. Really nice, kind of classic tote style, you know? Yeah. Oh, I see. Gotcha. Um, okay. So this is the other one that we're keeping, and I've been using this. Is this not That's a gr amazing? It's just such a good size bag. So it's huge. I have my sweater in here that I just pulled out. I have my socks in here, and I also have my Toft uh, project in here. And so, you do have a pocket. And I do have a pocket yep. in this one, which is very convenient because in here is the pattern um, inspiration so that I know like when to change colors. I have my ball bands. My crochet hook is in here as well. Um, my gauge that I wrote down for myself. Um, so super easy. And I have the book. The Toft book is in here yeah, as well. Yeah, they're so a great size. This is going to be my current knitting bag. It's good for a large project. Total, yeah, good for a large project or a lot of small ones or ones that you're just starting with. Or if you're traveling, 
It's not super wide either. So like if you're in the car, super that could easily fit on the floor in front absolutely. of you and you could work right and you it. could have fill multiple it. I mean, projects on it. hundred percent. So the two that we're going to be giving away in the future is dun, 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 dun. Cute. Oh, look golden at the girls. fabric, the golden girls. It's right, so colorful. Ladies. I know. Um, this one is one that does not have a pocket just as big. Yeah. Right. And then this one is gorgeous as well. A nice solid navy. Nice solid navy. This one does have the pocket. But it also has Inside. this on the exterior yes. pocket. And the pockets on the so outside. So that's a really nice detail. So I think this one might be, a, oh, this one feels a little bit thicker. Um, I was going to say, it might be a smaller size. No, I think it's but the it's same. But it's still, it's, you know, it's huge. Good So options. maybe it's a sampling of um, the, the different bags that, you know, he offers. We'll ha definitely have this linked all down below. Yes. The quality is outstanding. He did a fantastic job. The, the sewing is great. The fabrics are amazing. Um, so, Jay, thank you so much. That yes, thank you, Jeff. That was so nice of you to do that. And I absolutely love my bag. It's like my new best friend sitting next to me on the couch. And is that all Owl Post? Um, that is the Owl Post. Right. All right. So let's get into Vogue. We will... Well, I have one more thing to show before Vogue. Okay. Okay. So um, we are still taking part in the Woolens and Nosh Mystery Club every month. She dyes up a new colorway. And this month's colorway was... Colorway is hashtag Wes Anderson style. It's a really oh, pretty. This color. is the January colorway. Yeah, she. Um, I just got the email that the February one is on its way. Look how beautiful that is. She um, and I think she showed a picture. Oh. So I want to take a page out of Michael's book and try to cast these on every month. Where they're starting to pile up. Yeah. But so here so nice. is the way oh, that it will look. Wow! Yeah. Really, really pretty. I like the colors. Oh, I like the colors in between the colors. Yeah. How did she do the? Is that just a one by one rib? Yeah, that looks cool. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um. So that's that. Hashtag Wes Anderson style. Wollens and Nosh. She is just so talented. I can't. Hey, where's the? Okay, you have. We have this. So, yes. we did some damage at Vogue Knitting Live. So we'll go into a little detail on Saturday. We already talked about we, you know, we spent so much of our time obviously with our friends Kim, Kate, and Laura from the Knitting Posse. Yeah, from Lori from Skein and uh, Hope and Keisha, and we got to see two other friends who we got to meet in Brooklyn when we were at Brooklyn General. Mm -hmm. So we got to see is Melda or Izzy and her sister Kelly. And they're just two lovely, lovely, lovely people. They're, they're so they're, sweet. They were so great to chat with mm -hmm. at Brooklyn. We spent some, you know, a good amount of time chatting with them and then running into them at uh, Vogue and Kelly was wearing a shawl that she made in fancy flannel. Yep. I actually saw that three to four times. Three or four different people came up and they had made something with fancy flannel, which it's is great fun colorway. to see in person. Yeah. But what was really nice is, so Izzy, she is currently in the process of like trying to get a yarn store in the Bronx. Yeah. So they, they live in the Bronx and the only store that they had that sold yarn was a Michaels and the Michaels closed and there's been no type of replacement replacement for it. So like, you know, they take they have to take the subway or something to get to a local yarn store, which is about a 40 minute tr subway ride, we'll say. So she really thought of this idea of opening up a local yarn store in the Bronx and it would be called the Yarn Bodega. So good. I read an interview um, on Modern Daily Knitting where she talked a little bit about the inspiration, where the name came from. Her father, I believe, had a, a bodega in the area for 30 years. So she would really... It's kind of her brainchild. She yeah. would love to have this. So uh, she does have a GoFundMe. Definitely check out her Instagram uh, so it is the yarn bodega. There is the article is on 
Modern Daily Knitting's Instagram. You can find the link to that to learn a little bit more about this. And like I said, she has a GoFundMe to try to get a, a spot. And I think, you know, it's it's hard um, yeah. for some communities, but I think it's really important to have a community store like that. So I so check that out. It, uh, yeah. And you two were just really sweet. So and sweet. It's so nice to yeah. catch up with you guys at that. Agreed. So we we just had a lovely time. We spent all day Saturday at the market. We, we really were there did. from You know, we were on one floor for hours. Yeah, we were there from 10:30 till about 5 5:30 at the market. You know, we took some breaks for lunch and things yeah. like that, but we did make some purchases. So, one of our first stops was Katrinkles. It's always they nice to are, stop there. They're typically we've been there 2 years, but they're on the 5th floor right to your left. So we just got some um, stitch mark holders, one for each of us. So you can put your stitch markers on there. Yeah, and this way they, don't, they won't fall off. to a bag or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then this was super cute. Um, Kevin actually found this. And you, again, you never know. There's always some new things to, to find there. So these are intended to clip onto like a drop stitch or something that you need to like, you have a mistake that you need to kind of fix. One of them's a Band-Aid, and then the other one says, oops, fix this mistake. Yeah, I just right? thought they were cute little They're so cute. stitch marker yeah. placeholders. I mean, they always have fun things. And then the next place, one of our next purchases came from Yasmin, I, we... who designs by Yasmin. You guys will know her really for her earrings. They're, her crocheted earrings are fantastic. Oh, yeah, they're so good. Um, we bought a pair two years ago at Wollum Folk for our sister-in-law. And we saw these, I want to say online. Online. We were first. looking forward to seeing them in person. And then seeing them in person. Mm -hmm. So she started making these resin, I believe it's resin. Coasters. Um, coasters. That are crocheted just like her earrings are. Right. And then resin poured over them and sealed. She had so many different shapes and colors and styles. Mm -hmm. We spent a long time trying to decide which ones. We I know we were like, which one do we want? Yeah, um, and I just love this golden yellow. Me too. I think they're just so cute. Yeah, they really are. They really, really are. And it came in this beautiful holder. So, and you know what? I use not all the time, even as cup holders. I like to put candles on here because we have had a candle burn our laminate countertop before. Yep. Because it got too hot, so I do use coasters for candles. So that's enough. And the different shapes. She has round ones. Um, these this hexagon, hexagon one. ones. Yeah, they're just really, really cute. It's fun to see people expand what they're making. You yeah. know, like starting with the earrings and now moving into this as well as another right. option. And what and she's... Oh, sorry, go ahead. I was just going to say, and she's just super sweet. She's so sweet. Oh, my God. I love seeing her all the time. The Or whenever we get a chance to do it. And she was saying, like, this is only the beginning. She's having so much fun creating these. And she has a lot of new ideas and how to make them even better and add to them, which is, again, so exciting to Kevin's point to see somebody... You know, expand out of that and grow, you know, their products and things. Yeah. Super cute. Um, so, yeah. So, Sunder, like I was saying, we spent a lot of time at the marketplace and, you know, we said hi to, we got to say hi to Hohi. I know we mentioned that before. Mm -hmm. She was lovely. Uh, she did a little meetup at Brooklyn General's booth, which was across from Mayak. Yeah. And there was a very specific time and we just wanted to say hi because we did have the Zoom with her. But we've never met her in person and having that opportunity just to thank her for like putting on the the knit along and, you know, and us being involved in it. It was really, really great to be involved with that with her and Mayak. So it was nice to to yeah. see her. I think one of the things we talked about with Vogue that we would like to do next year is definitely go earlier, uh -huh. probably Thursday or Friday and take classes and do some of the lectures because I think. I really honestly feel like that's the highlight and I hear so many great things about the classes and I, to me, I feel like we're missing out if we don't take advantage of having some of these fantastic designers and teachers there. So that's something we're definitely going to look into doing next year. Yeah. And, and one more thing about Hohi, she was really the sweetest person. There was a line to see her obviously. Um, but she spent so much time with each individual person she was you know watching her say hello to people before we got in line to see her too you know but watching her like talk to people and giving them 
that time, uh, taking pictures, chatting. Like she really was so sweet and really cared, seemed to care a lot about um, the people that were coming up to see her. Oh, when you see that, you know, like sometimes people feel that the, you know, people who are front and center in this community and like who part of this are almost inaccessible. Um, she totally wasn't. She was sweet as pie. Yeah. Um, Agreed. Yeah. Love I her. think most people are accessible. Yeah. We talked about Prim. We got a couple of um, crochet hooks. And I think I called the three millimeter crochet hook a G hook. It's a C hook. Um, and then I also, I wanted to add to my collection. Um, I've noticed the five millimeter hooks are probably one of my more popular, like my more popular, my most used hooks. So I want to try a five millimeter um, crochet hook, which is an H hook. And then I also got a seven, which is a four and a half millimeter um, crochet hook, which kind of goes to alongside of like a US 8 needle. I don't know. So I figured I'll give those a try. Uh, add those to my collection. And they're relatively, you know, they're very affordable, the the prim hooks. And they, they felt really good in my hands. All right. So one of my first purchases also came from Toft. So I am going to attempt to knit this pattern. I hope I still have it up. Um, hey, where'd it go? All right, let me go back to my emails. Oh, here it is. This is the Highland Koo. Guys. All right, crochet. I don't know if I said it. Oh, I know. Look at oh him. Oh my gosh. So I also got the yarn from them. This is the colorway camel. It, do we have the same colors and oatmeal? Are my two colors? No, nope, I had oatmeal and stone. Okay, so oatmeal and camel, same base. It's just as a hundred percent wool. It's gorgeous. It's a two ply, and I think it's soft as all get up, and would love a sweater out of it. Um. Okay. Oh, you know we didn't go back to this place. No, I. We'll have to look they at. We have it a mill more. in Vermont. All right, so we can look into that. Yeah. And so let's see. So Saturday two after we were in the marketplace, uh, we went to the same place we had dinner at the year before, which is called Isle of Capri. It's on Third oh. Street. It's pretty off. It's an authentic Italian restaurant. The food is delicious. It was us, the knitting posse, our friend Sue, Beth. Uh, Beth McDonald Stone, who's a designer and also has a YouTube channel, and then Max, the knitter, yeah. Maxim Sear, Le Garçon. It's just good to see these people and catch up. And what's so fun about that dinner, and, and I don't know who it was who was talking about it. What was cool is there were so many conversations happening at so I know. many, at, all at the same time. And we... The flow of it was so easy that you could leave and enter a conversation at any given point in time. Seamlessly. And it right? just worked. Yeah. And that's how you can tell that these that we're all like meant to be friends. We spent dinner. I think we were there for like three oh hours my. eating and having some beverages and, and walked back to the hotel. And huge thank you to Rich, um, oh. Kate's husband, who Central obviously percent. wasn't there but he had ordered some appetizers for the table um yeah really was, like amazing Just the dinner amazing is lovely. time and then we spent a good hour probably right walking back to the hotel walking back we took our time it was a it was a nice night out um, it was yeah we walked we walked from the a from lot there. yeah a lot two and a half miles which i know doesn't sound like a mu like much but when but we took our time with it. We we stopped. We were chatting, and like Kevin said, like everybody just kind of kept like doing this, like in the walk and coming. Yeah, you together. would be with somebody and then somebody else. It was yeah, it was great, lovely. great time. I love these people from the bottom of my heart. It was yeah, such, such a great thing. Um, all right. Well, one of the things I meant to to say because this was at the bottom of the bag. I was looking for it to put on today. Um, Mayak is they are selling these cute little bracelets uh, in different sizes and. Uh, this one says, I love crochet, which I thought was super cute. They have it in like white and, and, uh, and black, um, different, you know, like I said, different sizes, different sayings. Uh, it was really cute. Paula had given this to me. So thank you so much. I, I wore it all weekend. It was really, really nice. Um, the other kits that we got from Bargello, like, look at this fun sticker. I really guys, if what? you, um, 
remember doing plastic canvas. Like I don't remember that. Go check them so out. So can I ask a question? So like, how does this work? So it's... we're going to seam it up, I would assume. Oh, okay. With right. the plastic already around it. So Correct. we got this a kit to do this. This is our shared kit. Yep. So he will do one. I will do one. Our um, our really good friend. Oh, there's a the koozies in here. Oh no way! Right. Where's the plastic canvas? That's in the bag. Oh, okay. Yeah. So yeah. So because you had to open the kit to look at the with thing. the koozies, which is smart because it protects the yarn and it won't felt it. Yep. And then here are all the colors that are going to be used. Yep. So again, in a hello. Bargello. And you might have shown this, but here's some of the no, that was the different online. projects um, that you can do. That, like Kevin said, the coin purses and stuff. Yeah, so you have some tissue boxes, sunglass, a purse, and a zipper pouch. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that one. We're going to each try to do one. That's going to be my, that's our shared kit. Uh, this one is another one that Kevin got for our succulents. Super cute. And this comes with enough to make two. Yeah. That came with enough to make two of the koozies. And then here is all your DMC. But it's yarn. thicker yarn. It looks almost like a worsted it, weight yarn. I would right? definitely say it's a, a worsted DK weight. DK at least. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So, yes. Check them out. Totally check them out. Really, and really then, great. They gave you like little... There's websites uh, or a website for instructional videos, which I'm probably going to use. And then how to, like a quick guide for beginners, which is for me. Um, going back to Mayak, they actually launched a new base. Yeah. And this is separate from, it's Mayak, but not Mayak because it is not Tibetan. This is an Italy-based yarn. So this is their fiber gentili. And they have some solids it's and really some speckled pretty. yarn. This is a sport weight. It's 100% Italian wool. Um, they And I talked to Andrea about it quite a bit and learned about the process. It is sourced in Italy, spun and dyed in Italy. Um, they are doing some work to try to get it, like to get the ability to even uh, like a washing facility for mm. the yarn uh, because a lot of places have to ship it to other countries to get it washed and processed and so they want to keep shipped it back they really Italy. cut yeah yeah so it is it's beautiful there it's was a be shawl there and i was talking to um and this is somebody that we got to see too was thea coleman and we yes. did not know this no we did it and shame on you for not introducing yourself properly me no we don't she, i know she doesn't watch this no she and the one of the founders of ravelry yeah was there we did not know we just like we're at starbucks putting some sugar in our coffee and i was like chatting with her and so yeah it was great to see thea again we saw her for the first time at brooklyn general over the summer mm -hmm. and ray just showed he finished a couple one hat and started a second one by her which you didn't bring up i did, or did you, oh you finished both yeah and i think I okay showed. yeah i didn't and, start the um and she's doing the, the knitting posse is doing a Thea Coleman accessory knit along. So it was really fun to run into them again. This is really beautiful. Um, but Thea and I were talking about this yarn and I said, it's, it's super soft. You know, I'm trying to figure out what it reminds me of. Mm. Like the shawl there was gorgeous and I couldn't explain um, the type of fabric that it makes. But what I want to try, I'm going to look for fingerless mitts out of this. Oh, great idea. I think this would be a That's fantastic. 50 grams. 50 grams, it is 191 yards. This is the colorway called, this is Sabia? 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 I don't know. So really excited for Mayak to have a new yeah, Italian-based yarn line. And, and he was really lovely. Yeah, it. this is a gorgeous base. So that came from the Mayak booth. And then, are you done with all your purchases except with the one thing that I'm I mean, hanging on to? I only got a sweater's quantity of yarn and uh, one kit. One in a uh, And then something else, but we, we will both show. these. Are, yeah. This was our... Splurge. Big splurge. All right. So next up is we stopped at Asylum Fibers, and yeah. I got two things there. We so Stephanie is super sweet. So sweet. If you don't follow her, follow her, and Give she's doing love. that february fiber challenge mm -hmm. she is 
a dyer. She sings in like two bands. She works in HR. She does it all. And we met her, I want to say Woolen Folk, two years ago. And then really- No, we met her on the hill at Rhinebeck. Did we? Mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure. No, she did. Oh, no. She vends at either Cake or Indy, and mm-hmm. we didn't meet her. The but first we, time, I think, yes. was at the Hill at Rhinebeck. And she's like, oh, I'm a silent five. I was like, oh, my God. I just started following you. I told remember her. Remember that? Yes, I remember this yeah. conversation clearly now. Yep. Um, but she now lives in the same town that we do, so which is really funny. So, And we talked about that. Like, oh, she's like, I'm thinking of moving to, like, Milford or Stratford. So I got some Surrey silk from her. Reason is I want to hold it double with a fingering weight and do a half. It looks like cotton candy. It does. I'm trying to find, as I've been entering some of this yarn into my Ravelry stash, I've been trying to think of ways that I can use it. And I thought just holding a skein of Surrey with a fingering weight. Totally. I'll do the Parkview hat by Tracy Miller from great, The Grocery Girls. Great, great, great. And make a nice DK hat for somebody or myself. And then she had these, if you guys haven't seen them, these are the I-cord makers. So it's the three latch hooks and it helps you make an I-cord. I've seen them videos on it all over Instagram prior to going. And she was doing some demos for it. She had a bunch of fantastic colors. So picked one up from her. And then at the Brooklyn General booth. Oh, we the, met Amy again? Yeah, we got to say hi to yes. Amy Gillet She's always so nice to talk to. Lobby and Amy. Love She's Andy. another one that is just so um, not graceful. What's the word I'm looking for? Genuine? Maybe yeah, genuine and um and patient, you know, meeting like these people will meet like so many people I know. throughout the day and just as like they're equally as um You know what's cool gracious. About- that's what yes, I'm that's gracious. what I'm thinking of. Gracious. You know what's really interesting with her too is that she has a very calming yeah. and mellow energy about her. Totally. You know, like it's very yeah, it's just very common, mm-hmm. which is nice. Yeah. So, Brooklyn General typically will have, at any event that I've seen them at, they carry Lobby Anime. They bring it with them. Yeah. So, it's always a very popular booth. I got some Cory Worsted in Winterfell. This color is gorgeous. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's 75% Falkland Corridale and 25% Gotland wool. This is a stunning color. Yeah, I saw it on the fingering base and I went straight to worsted because as I now know, I have a ton, a ton of fingering and I don't need single skeins. But you, could, you have a very empty cube right there. I'm just starting to enter this. Those are the... Oh, because they're not. In yeah, the anymore. rest of the yarn oh. is in a bag downstairs I on see. the porch so I could go and take pictures when it's sunny. Mine is still... Uh... So this... I think I'm going to do a Thea Coleman hat. One of the... Totally sure. One, there's another one that's called Another Bourbon. Yeah, I saw that. So I think I'm going to do Another yep. Bourbon with That's this. great. I saw that one. All right. And then our last purchase is... I think it's our last one, right? This is the break okay. in the bank. Yeah. We, so. You know, we saw a bunch of other um, people and got like little cute I, stitch markers and stickers and all of those things. So if... And again, if you um came to say hello to us we cannot thank you enough and we say this all the time if you ever see us out um as, as long as we're not you know peeing or eating um please come up and say hello yeah you know good That's point it. okay all right so our last purchase was a splurge honest yes. so and i'm going to kind of explain this not really not i don't have to really. justify but if you guys remember over the past probably two months um the lovely folks at Jimmy Beans Wool yeah. sent us their new needle binder. And then Ray, we purchased one for Ray. I like the binder. Me too. I don't love it. Mm-hmm. I don't love it for my main needle source because it doesn't hold all of my Chowgu needles. Honestly, on the one on the what I would consider the needle page. So we just, guys, we just broke the bank. We just did it. Right? Thread of Maple was there. We got a thread of maple binder with one page. Yeah, I mean, like, honestly, like, wah, wah, right now. But, again, to Kevin's point, this is, this, and we hesitated because it's, 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 it's very pricey. It is. Right? And we understand that it is very pricey. It is not in everyone's budget. Not in the slightest. And it's not in our budget to get a fully stocked binder Correct. right now, right? But it's an investment because 
And and again, it's not justifying it, but it's, it makes sense if you think about it for us, right? We we knit a lot. Um, we purchase, we have a lot of things. Um, and we have a lot of needles and notions. Yeah, and, that, and we use them, right? Correct. So this is one of those things where we can certainly, we will continue to add pages to this. It's an investment. Um, we understand that it's an investment, right? And we really, we walked by that booth so many times we were talking about like, you know what, maybe we should do it. No, maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should. Um, but we, we luckily, when we went up to the booth, there wasn't a lot of people there. And I think that's a lot of times at these events that we see Thread and Maple at, it's a very popular place and you, you don't really have a lot of time to go through it. But we we went to the booth. The owner was there uh, originally. And, we, and her mother. And her mother. Um, but we had, and I, I, I wish I knew what her name was. Um, but we chatted with the owner for a little while and, and started really looking at the binders and holding them and looking at the pages. You know, we walked away uh, and then we decided to um, to bite the bullet. So there were two colorways, two colors. There was uh, whiskey and chocolate. Yeah. I think we opted for, they're both equally beautiful. We opted for the whiskey. If you've never seen this before, um, they have individual uh, pages in this binder that, that is specific to your knitting needs. And they can be taken out. They can be put back in. They can be added to. So because we both use Chowgu interchangeables, they have an actual Chowgu interchangeable page that will fit all of the needles for that one collection in here. Um, did you take yours out by any chance? No. no. Um, so they're easy to take out. And what really kind of sold us too, and that's different than, you know, first off, the, the, they're 100% leather, genuine leather. It smells great. It feels We're, great. And they are made in... I think it's... Is it Canada? No. No. I, I thought it was a Canadian. It, that's where... I forget where they're um, made from, though. Um, so the, the needle case... Also, each individual page, no matter which one you have, um, folds up and can be taken just like this, right? Um, I don't know how they... Do they seal or no? Yeah. yeah. So what you do, you have the buttons here. Oh, Undo thanks. Undo one. Undo gotcha. this one. And then you snap them together. Thank you. And now it's a little travel case. Yep. That so you if just you just want bag. one page to bring with you, because this is obviously a huge binder, you just bring the one page with you. Um, we looked at um, we looked at getting different uh, different pages. We identified a couple of pages that we want to add to our collection in the future. So we're really excited about this. Um, yeah, and I will continue to use the the Jimmy Beans one, but I will use it for my not main needle set like mm -hmm. i do have an addy set and i do have a um some nitpicks so i'll move those in there and some of my extras yeah that don't have a home but this will be my main home main, for my main home and what i like about this too and i've thought about this recently is that i do have a lot of chowgu needles and i do have a lot of duplicates so i could if i cho chose to always buy a second so needle page and have a needle oh, page yeah. just for my extras because I have but, the five inch tips as well. Right. So I will get. I will probably get a second one for my five inch tips. And it will be just something that grows over time. As Absolutely. We're able to. We do got so. the. We got the large one. They're two different sizes. There's a which honestly large and a large like a eight six page or eight page or something. No, like that. there's a four page and a seven page okay, maximum. I have to pee really bad. And I will always recommend doing the seven because there's a ten dollar difference between the buying yeah. price. So just get the larger yeah, one. Big picture. Mm -hmm. Um, what else did we decide that we wanted to get? So there, uh, definitely the one for the cables and maybe, um, Oh, they also have the, the Chowgu pages for the minis, which we have those as well. So that might not be a bad idea. No, though. So it's saying that the Chowgu one will hold your minis also. So you could get a page like you don't. Oh yeah. Look at that. So oh, it so shows easy. you. You don't need to get a separate. In their brochure. Like yeah. they have an Addy's, a Chowgu, a Haya Haya, mm -hmm. a Likey Licka whatever right oh we want to get the cables organizer yeah they offer one for nitpicks for knitters pride oh we want the notions page too so there's a lot of options in it, it again totally. it's pricey each page has to be purchased individually but 
But that's the great thing about building the collection, right? So you, Christmas, you know, birthday gifts, things like that. If somebody's, as you're building your collection, if you're, you know, people are looking for ideas for you, um, you know, I just, I was blown away by the quality. Actually, this is the first time I, right, that we, yeah. I think, touched them and felt them and smelled them and it's I, a whole experience. Yeah. In the past, I knew that they were super pricey and I just walked away from it. Yeah. But I also want a solution for everything. Me too. And, you know. Here it is. That's it. So um, there's that... so much more that we could say about that weekend. Ugh. We just spent time with friends and got to meet new and old ones. And that's the most important part. Did we say that's that we saw our, piece. Friend, our friend Sue was there? Yeah, Sue, our, Sue, who's fantastic. We... And then on the train ride home, we got to, you know, with we left with Kate and Laura and Deb and then Tracy, who was just fantastic to talk to. We heard about some of the classes that she took, which just kind of reinforced the idea that next year we really yeah. need to take advantage yeah. of having. And they're those. not just classes, too. Like there are speakers, you know, like Hohe didn't do a class, I don't think, but she, she did spoke. classes. Oh, but, but she also had lectures. Yeah. Oh, lectures. That's Wait, what it's called. Guys, bef- all right, we're going to wrap this up, but we have, I have one last thing. Okay. In the previous episode, I asked for some help identifying a sweater. Oh my gosh, yes. And you're right. Y'all definitely came out in force. You sure did. And I started creating a vest bundle mm-hmm. on Ravelry where I've been putting in some of those suggestions. However, Vincent, who is Vesuvius Crafts, who did some classes there. He did like three. Crazy. Oh, it's looked, always good to see him. Well, I only saw him that once. I know. He gives the best hugs, by the he, way. He's just so, so great. You know. yeah. He sent this to us. He's a, He's the winner, winner, chicken dinner. And this is pretty much like spot on. It is the... Fair Isle Vest by Mary Jane Mucklestone. It is from the Craftsy class that she did. It's a different color, but this is pretty much Spencer's vest. So I will be making this at some point when I pick colors. But we can't thank you enough. Honestly, we had so many messages and so many emails with pattern suggestions and pictures and all of that. And Kevin created a whole bundle because they're all so stunning. Like you want to do every single one. Yeah. Right. So thank you. That's a lot of work to try to come up with all of those things. There's one that came up multiple times too. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a simple. And somebody's knitting it. I think um, Steven is, it is Steven knit Sven. Oh, yeah. Oh, we saw Irina um, from fiber chats. Oh my God. We saw so many people. I'm sorry if we missed, if we missed giving you a shout out. I've, we've missed many. Um, (laughs) Oh, is this it? This guy no. was having a ball downstairs. I know, he really is. This is it. Stillwater Fall River Vest. Oh, that is So gorgeous. Steven's knitting this now. A couple of you sent this to me. Um, so that's been added to the bundle as well because I think it's cute. So We're not going to have those patterns listed below, but if you follow Kevin on uh, Ravelry, you'll be able to see his bundles. Yeah. So guys, I think that's it. We've talked for two and a half hours. Um, so we won't cover what we've been reading and watching, but thank you for sticking around if you're yeah. still here. I feel like there are moments where I talked fast because I felt rushed Same. with the time. So if so, I apologize. You could just turn it down to 0.75 speed. <laughs> Hello. Um, so, again, thank you for helping us reach 20K oh subscribers. Yes. I hope that you guys had a great two weeks and that you have a good mm-hmm. um Upcoming two weeks. Start your kid along if you haven't already. I'm hopefully we give you some inspiration. Check out Cynthia's nursing journey, please, because I'm so proud of her and I know she worked really hard on that. So um, she would very much appreciate that. She has no idea I'm talking about it. So it would be really cool to get a message from her later and be like, um, I just got a couple of um, orders for this. Orders? Do um, you know anything about that? And I'm not going to say for sure, but you may see us at Skein Yarn Shop in two weeks for a trunk oh, you, show from yeah, Hope will. Made Yarn Co. and Simply Vintage Design. That's so. what I wanted to talk about. Yes. You will see us there. We are okay. going there. All right. We're going to Skein in yeah. two weeks for the trunk show of Simply Vintage Designs and Hope Made Yarn Co. So, so we would love to be see there. You. They would love to see you. We'll see you. They would love to see you. Go check out their yarn and jewelry. Mm-hmm. So, until then, hope you guys End have a podcast. good two weeks. We will see you in a fortnight. Bye. Bye.